the assessments, the, the assessor. Who, who, we, are, we are residents just here. We're working as a third party. We don't do it. The, the, top, the assessor does that. We're not any part of that. You've given us plenty so of information. Yep. Yep. So, We've got plenty yeah, of information I, I, here. But we're, okay, we're good. So, we we, uh, we got we to gotta fly, unfortunately. We got others stacked up here. Okay, and just so you know, in that packet also, I've got the soils report that identifies and proves what I told you. It's okay. actually very thorough. Yep. Yep. So very good. I did the best I could, gentlemen. Yep. <laughs> yep. Thank, Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thanks for all the information. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye now. Bye bye. All right, are we clear? Clear? But he's going to tell us. He is. That's what we're waiting for. Uh, good morning. Hello there. Morning. Welcome to the Board of Assessment Review. Thank you. Um, to just kind of get things started off, I'd like to just swear you in. Yeah. So do you swear that the information that you're about to give is the best, to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? I do, yes. Great. So if we could just start off, I uh, just want to remind you that we are um, obviously pressed for time today, so we want to you know, kind of keep this to around 10 minutes or so. Sure. Uh, um, but if you could start with your name and the address of the property that you're, you're contesting. Yes, my name is Jeff Lansbury. L-A-N-S-B-E-R-R-Y. Okay. My address is 2085 Baird Road. Um, do you need the tax ID number or is that sufficient? No, the address is sufficient. So just kind of uh, summarize for us, you know, kind of what your assessment uh, is at and what you're asking for. Okay. Um, okay. The assessment is at 202000 Okay. And I'm asking for a maximum of... 184 and my reasoning for that if you notice i included four comps in the area wayland road uh, two on penfield road and one at high Lids drive extension um, taking the sale price of all four of those houses add it up divide by four that's where i come up with the 184 that's based on sales um, in addition to that, our house here, um, the house on Wayland Road has walk-in closets. Ours does not. The one uh, 2006 Penfield Road, that property has two full baths, where ours is just one. And the one at High Ledge Drive, that also has two full baths, and that's also on a quieter street, a cul-de-sac than what we're on. And that was the highest seller of all the four of those houses. Um, also, um, where we're at here on Baird Road, we're about 300 feet from the corner. We get numerous traffic backups throughout the day due to the school. Uh, there are expansions through the years, adding of the athletic fields. Um, the library is done in addition. Um, there's more activity there, community, and there's also been a huge increase in housing at the north end of Baird, uh, at the end, towards the end of Atlantic, Naples Creek, also across the road on Selden Court, I think it is, and then they just did also a big addition at Five Mile and Atlantic of new houses. And there's only three roads north-south in Penfield, the Five Mile, Baird Road, or 250. So all that's also done an increase in traffic. And then I guess the last thing, or another thing to say here, the housing boom that caused some of this increase in pricing, um, that's, I think, part of the inflated price of the assessment because of the economy. However, the market, the mortgage rates now are pushing upwards of 5 to 6%, and that's the highest it's been in the last three years. So with the mortgage rates going up, that's going to slow the sales because the interest rates. Yep. So that could could you just tell us a little bit condition of your right house? Now. Bath, kitchen, condition? I'm sorry? The condition or modernization in your house, just really quickly describe that. There 
There's no eat-in kitchen. Um, it's original to the builder of the house of 1959. Um, we have a half bath downstairs that's about a four by six dimension, and the master bathroom upstairs is not much bigger than that. Are they older or modernized? No, they're original to the house. Okay. I mean, we've replaced the toilets, um, you know, and done a vanity, but uh, nothing, there's no uh, fancy showers or anything like that, no. Okay. We can All right. Over. All right. Great. Great. Now, my question to you, will I hear anything when we're, what's, what's your next step here on this? Yeah, sure. So now that we've got all your information, we'll we'll go through it and we'll make our assessment. Uh, the town will get back to you um, in in a matter of a few weeks, and um, that will be um, kind of the the next step. So we're gonna we'll go through everything and and make our assessment and and then let the town get back to you. All right. So I'll get a letter either way. Um, oh, yes, one other thing correct. I want to tell you too on the on our 2021 or July. 21st um, tax bill, our assessment at that time was about 169 and uh, I honestly felt that was pretty much in line, but going with the four houses that I found the comps on, the 184, I guess we're somewhere in between those two numbers. Okay. Okay. Very good. Well, thank you so much. I thank appreciate you. the information. All right. Thanks for calling. Thank Take you. Morning. Good morning. This is Miranda Sprague. How are you? Good, Miranda. How are you today? <laughs> I'm good. Good. Thank uh, you. Can we start off? Uh, I just want to swear you in. Um, do you swear that the information that you're about to give us is, to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? Yes, sir. Great. So, just uh, as a formality, just you already kind of said your name, but uh, kind of give us your name and the property address, and then uh, let us know kind of what your situation is and what you're, you're asking for. Okay, sounds good. Um, again, my name is Miranda Sprague. I live at 1 Black Forest Drive, Webster, New York, 14580. That is the property that we're speaking about today, uh, today in regards to the assessed value. Um, I, I, I apologize for asking a question with a question, but, or answering a question with a question, but um, I provided um, a whole slew of exhibits and details. Um, was this board able to, to review that at all, or should I pretend as though you hadn't had a chance to take a look at that? No, we have that information. Um, if you want to just kind of, you know, stick at a, at a high level, overview sort of okay. just overview it. Or yeah. Summarize it quickly would, would be great. Thank you. Yeah, I, I know I only have so many minutes. Um, okay, so oh, we are a new owner to this property. We purchased it in July. Um, we purchased it for the for so many different reasons, but one of which is the way the house is situated. It looks out to a nice, mature woods. It's private. Um, and we have big picture windows that look out to it. Um, and then <laughs> after after purchasing it, never being disclosed to us, um, we found out in February that as the excavator was coming across the road of, of a private drive, Black Forest Drive, um, the previous owners had given the approval to get this area cleared. And so there, there's over 700 feet of cleared area or cleared um, for a ditch um, for the benefit of town of Penfield residents. Uh, we were told that it was to help with the complaints that they were getting on Hermant Street for flooding on, on their lawn. Um, and so I, they I'm sorry to bother you real so quick. You, you did not know about this when you purchased the property? No. Wow. No, sir. Okay. Hmm. Do you have any recourse against the... the sellers? Do you have any recourse against the previous owner? <laughs> Not not currently, no. <laughs> but it's been considered since. I mean, it, it honestly, should, it should it be. I mean, completely that, changed its curb appeal. That, that's um, something the the lawyer, at least, or somebody should have found out. So that's surprising. Yeah. But well, I don't know how they would have, because I don't know that the town recorded anything. Hmm. There's no easement. There's no right of way for this ditch. There's nothing. Hmm. 
So in the, I have a survey. I provided it as part of my evidence in the package for this meeting. There, there is no right of way. There is no easement for this ditch. This ditch zigzags through our property. 50 feet of cleared area was taken um, throughout those 700 feet through our property. It island or alienates, I'm not sure how you would verbalize that, but um, about three quarters of an acre. So we can't even get to our other property because there's a ditch that's, you know, 10 feet wide, four feet deep. Um, <laughs> so, I, and this is something that we look out to. I mean, you don't, you used to look out to a mature forest that had huge black walnut trees and huge maple trees. They've taken those trees. Um, they haven't taken all of our trees, of course, because like I said, it's 50 feet wide, but it's a significant amount of trees that were taken. Mm -hmm. um, there was the entire look of the backyard is completely different. The curb appeal is has been diminished, and it, um, amongst other things, I mean, like I said, you you can't get like to all of our property now. Even <clears throat> it, it, they went down the middle of the backside of our land. Um, so I. And it wasn't for the benefit of Black Forest residents. It wasn't for the benefit of me. It was for the benefit of other town residents. Mm. I mean, Can you... I, we're not mean people. We weren't going to, like, you know, <laughs> scream and say you can't come. I mean, we're good citizens, and we want to be a good neighbor. But at the same time, we're not going to be a good neighbor and then get get pardon my language, but it's screwed on the other end, too. So we get screwed on our property ourselves, like the value of it, the, the aesthetics of it, the curb appeal, just the overall use of it. And then to be handed our assessment, and we were we were being good neighbors. Um, and we had no idea when we purchased this property. And I'm the purchaser of this property, so I can tell you that, yes, if I knew that this was happening or if that was like that in the backyard to begin with, there was no way that I would be buying this property for the price that I did. I mean, it was already inflated as it is. We all know that they are right now because of the situation that COVID has driven people to want to move out of the cities, buy houses, be on their own, so they have their own little piece of solitude if some craziness goes awry again. So um, the swath so of trees that was removed, it's, it measures roughly what? Did you say, say that again? The swath of trees that was removed. Is it like 50 feet wide and 300 feet long or what? So my, by my measurements of everything, it's over 700 feet of ditch on our property. Okay. So if you do five, 50 times 700, I suppose that, yeah, you could roughly estimate how much acreage was... It's getting towards an acre. Taken, trees taken from it, yeah. Yep. Okay. All right, unless you got anything else, you, get, you do have a couple more minutes, but otherwise, if you're all set, we probably got all the information we need. Okay, what are the next steps then? We, the town will get back to you uh, probably sometime in June, mid-June, and let you know the results of our findings. Okay, do you all have any questions? I was used, I'm, I'm used to the, that, like, these meetings being in person and we seeing each other's yeah. faces. Us so too. I That's what we're used to. Yeah. Questions or yes. not. No. This stinks. We agree. We don't like this either, but this is how we do it. Yep. I, this is really awkward. I mean, at least a Zoom meeting would have been a little easier right. to know, like, right. if right. there's confusion on your faces or not. Yeah. Like, I, mean, <laughs> I, 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 admit, I mean, it's seriously, it's so crazy. Um, <laughs> I agree. You explained it really um, good. You explained it well. So, I, At the end of the day, I don't think that our property is worth what it is. It, it, our property was impacted more than anyone else's property here. And I, like, what are we to do with this property now that there's a ditch mm -hmm. going down the middle of it? It's not like we had enough acreage back there to build another house. How? There, the, the land is dissected by a ditch. And, you know, we asked for culverts. They were disregarded. They had already gone through and seeded. 
And they said, oh, well, we could come back, but that would mean we would have to tear everything up that we just made nice. And they had known, and they were only going to put, you know, a 12-inch culvert in, which if you come out and look at this ditch, a 12-inch culvert really isn't, isn't it's enough. It's not large enough for the ditch that they dug. So I, I, I hope that you really do consider the fact that nope, we have nope, these huge picture windows and we're looking out at this. We will and give for the benefit a, of a lot of information, people. but we got to We absolutely will. The next one, but we will consider everything. Thank you so I much. I understand. Thank you all for your time. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Board of Assessment Review. Um, just you. to kind of get things started, let me first swear you in. Uh, so do you okay. swear that the information that you're about to give us is to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? Absolutely. Great. So just uh, kind of get it on record. Just state your name, uh, the address of the property um, that you're here to talk about today, and then just kind of give us a you know quick overview of where you're at and what you're expecting to get. Okay, uh, my name is Frank Melia. The property is 7 Tuscany Lane. We have been here uh, since uh, September of 2019. And um, you know, we looked at the property, you know, then, during the summertime, obviously, it was up for sale. And, and at the time, I thought we paid a little bit more than what it was worth. And I see the assessment, and I think, boy, that's really way up there. Um, do you have questions or anything you want to start with or or you want me just to go through my my fact sheet well it looks like you uh you purchased the property you said in 19 um for how much did you purchase it for we purchased it for three hundred and five thousand. okay and and i thought that was a, a bit high all right but we were just trying to uh move because we, we babysit you know our grandchildren and we said boy we got it we got to get this moved on we had been looking since january looking for a home and uh and we found this one and said, all right, you know, let's, let's go with this one. And it kind of hit a floor plan that we liked. And, you know, until you get into a house and you really don't know, you know, start living in it with the, with the pluses and minuses are. Um, yes, I'm just trying to find my family. Have you, you made any improvements to the home since you've been there? No, no. To the home, no. Property, you know, we've, we've cleared some area out. You know, so if you look, you have a sur copy of the survey in front of you? Yes. All right. So that little piece that sticks out up on the back, well, that's up on a hill. And there are a bunch of, you know, grapevines, poison ivy, dead ash trees, uh, car parts, um, other home things people have disposed of up there. You know, I, I cleared all of that out. Okay, we cleared all of that out. You know, it's been a three-year project, okay? Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, the house, you know, no no improvements. We, we, did, we did install a... Uh, a fence across the back just to try and uh, keep some of the wildness from the previous the other yards coming through but the, the one of the things that you know is discouraging to us uh, you know we love gardening you know and that native plants stuff like that so the whole north side of the property is um, uh, it's an easement so I can't plant anything there for 10 feet so I'm losing probably uh, I think I got it in there about you know, nine percent of the property area that they can't do anything with. Okay, um, that's one piece there. The, the basement on the house is unfinished. The basement plumbing. Um, if the sump pump or electric fails, I'm gonna need to bucket the water upstairs. Okay, <laughs> the sump pump runs nine months of the year, at least once per hour. And I understand why the house was for sale in you know July, August, because it's nice and dry here. <clears throat> but otherwise, you walk around the backyard, you know, almost up to the house, and it's, you know, muddy, soggy, and everything else, okay? So the ground doesn't perk. We're at the bottom of a hill, okay? So the back part of the property, the back uh, 20 feet, is a hill up to the property line for the homes behind us. And water just oozes out of that hill, you know, all, all winter long and spring, and uh, keeping, you know, helping to keep the backyard wet. Um, let's see. So you got, yeah, it looks like in your application you had uh, a few comparable sales. 
Yes, yes. You yeah. want to talk about those for just a second? Sure, sure. For uh, the home of Colleton, Colton, um, you know, it's a similar size home. They, you know, they have many friends of ours, and uh, but the property is totally usable. Property is totally usable. The basement's finished. They have a shed. The yard is fenced in. Um, none, none of that here. Okay. All right. Um, State Road, that house, they just finished building that, you know, in 2020. It's not quite the same size, but sold for less. Lot size is the same. And, you know, basement's unfinished. There's another home in this track um, on a corner here, 3 Tuscany Lane. It's a bit smaller, but that yard is totally usable. Fenced in, you know, uh, finished basement, uh, a shed, covered patio, um, you know, things that are usable, you know, year-round. So, so the whole yard is usable, okay? Whereas here we have um, just a small portion of the yard that is usable. The, um, let's see here. Once you, like I said, once you get into the house, there are essentially no front windows. The two front windows the house has are bedrooms. So if you want to, you know, be in a kitchen or living room or something like that and look out at the front, you can't. You have to get up and walk into the bedroom. You know, we didn't realize that at the time. You know, you just look. And the door has a very small window up at the top. You can stand on your tippy toes and look out. The, uh, um, the sale on your street, 3 Tuscany, um, yes. maybe I'm missing yeah. that, but did when did that sell? Um, that was November 20. I got it on screen. It's, we got that. It's but November I, 20. November, I didn't see it before. Yeah, November so 2020 20 or 22 or 21, something 20, like that. 2020. 20. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that was another recent sale. Okay. Um, the house across the street from that, you know, you, you can't even compare that one, the one at Sorrento. That, that's just totally out of my league, that house there. Mm -hmm. It's a much larger house, property size the same, but that was a home arama home, so I'm sure it's got all kinds of features in it. You know, I remember when it was up for sale, looking at the uh, the, the pictures online. That's you know, finished basement, plumbing, and everything else down there. So, like I said, my my, my biggest concerns are, uh, you know, I also mentioned the the patio slopes towards the house. I don't have a shed. Uh, we have no sidewalk plow in the winter, no yard waste pickup. Okay, and like I said, if I do a lot of gardening. You know, I have to either put that in, in my garbage or, um, yeah, that, that, that's where it goes, or, or piled up. You know, composting, I understand, but if you're trying to get rid of, you know, <laughs> foreign plant matter and sticks and stuff like that, it just doesn't comp uh, compost that quick. We do have the, the property across the street. There is a, um, I, I don't know what you would call it, but it's used as a, the neighbors use it to add, put the yard waste in, you know, so I've used that on occasion. Or you put some stuff in there. Mm -hmm. But it would be much nicer to have the, the, the pickup so you can just pile it up and uh, let it go because I, I think that area across the street is going to look pretty bad in a few more years. Yep. So we'll be calling the town about, hey, guys, what can you do to help us out with this? <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Okay, great. If they got anything else, that'd be great. Otherwise, we got to wrap things up in the next couple minutes. Yep. Okay. Like I said, you know, just the, the things that with the service we don't have um, – and the wetness in the yard. Um, okay. Like I said, a lot of it's not usable. So thank you for your time. Great. Thank, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll make our assessment, and the uh, town will get back to you um, in the next few weeks. All right. Thank you very much. Thank All you. right. Thanks. Have a great day. Yep, you too. Bye. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Very good, thanks. All right. So, uh, just to kind of kick it off, I need to swear you in. So, uh, sure. do you swear that the information that you're about to give us is, to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? Yes, I do. Great. So that we have it on record, can you just uh, tell us your name and the property that you're here to talk about, as well as you know, kind of what you're looking to get? Okay. Yes, my name is Gordon Erlacher. I live at 612 Falcon Crest Drive, and our um, code is uh, 14625. And um, I'm trying to 
uh, resolve an issue with the assessment and uh, suggested that I felt 264000 was a fair assessed valuation for our home uh, that was based on the uh, attached uh, preview that I provided with you, which was uh, our application for a uh, remortgage last year uh, done by Genesee Regional Bank. They assessed the house at $250,000 in value at that time. Um, I feel that that's pretty recent, and uh, the fact that it uh, that I feel that a $264,000 appraisal is is fair and reasonable based on the fact that, uh, that that's that's only one year later, and is uh, let's see, I also have from uh, the New York real estate market report the fact that. Uh, in the last, in the month of March, uh, the typical home in Rochester, in the right, I'm sorry, in Monroe County, uh, the price was down 6.1% from a month earlier. Um, and that report was published in, uh, let me see what, it was in the Democrat and Chronicle on 427 of this, uh, of this year. And um, that's, that's basically it. I've attached some other, what I feel are re relatively comparable sales, although each of those has ho uh, housing that square footage is over 1,800. And uh, they sold in the 265 to 270 range. So I, ju I just feel that a $264,000 appraisal is, is reasonably fair. All right, and the town has you reassessed at two ninety four nine. Is that correct? No, they got me reassessed at two seventy eight two. I think it is. They did a reassessment. If you look at the attached they might have papers today. Oh, okay. Two seventy eight two then. Two seventy eight two. Great. Unless you got anything yeah. else, we can go over all this information, and the town will get back to you within a few weeks. Okay. Thank you. I thank, appreciate thank your you time. Thank you so much. All right, thank thank you. you very much. Yeah. Have a nice day, Doc. Thanks. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you doing today? Good. Who am I speaking to? Uh, my name is Kevin Kane. One of the board members of the Board of Assessment Review. Hi, Kevin. How are you? Great. Well, welcome, welcome to the meeting. Um, to get things started, I just need to swear you in. So, do you swear that the information that you're about to give is, to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? Yes. Great. All right. And so, just so we have it on the record, can you just state your name and the property you're here to discuss, and then what uh, you're you're looking to to get? Sure. Uh, my name is Ron Kakura, and uh, my property is 28 Hampstead Drive, Western New York. And I'm here to, I guess, discuss the, uh, the increase in assessment values that have gone up uh, as of recently. So uh, I should have, uh, you should all have packets that were submitted. Yep. That's yep. correct. Yep. Yep. So it looks like the assessment the town has you at is 590, and you're looking to get to 485. Is that correct? That is, Kevin. I just want to give you a little color behind that, if I may. Absolutely. Okay. So, uh, well, thanks again, guys. I appreciate the time here with the board. Uh, so, yeah, the packets basically consist of, you know, it's a it's a recap, composite. What I did is I looked at, you know, eight homes in the area, uh, so to speak, and created, you know, a composite, so to speak, on, on those homes, uh, you know, puts and takes with the homes, but as a starting point, they came to average $135.88 a square foot, okay? So uh, with that, you know, three of those homes were in my subdivision as well, and that composite of those three homes came out to 137.31. You should, you should see all that on the second page. Mm -hmm. So, you know, using that as a calibration, I guess, you know, and, and applying it, you know, uh, to my home with, with the increased value that you, you know, you guys are saying that I've increased from, 380 uh, to 590. I mean, that's that's a it's a big increase, right? Nearly you know 56, 57 percent. But you know, 
extrapolating 590,000 uh, relative to my square footage puts me at $170.80. Uh, so well north of the composite that I created, uh, upwards of 25 to 26% higher. Okay, so from there, I'm just kind of using those numbers and, and backing them down to my square footage at the, again, the composite of 135.88 puts me around 470. And, and again, realizing that's a starting point. There's puts and takes. And, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with my property or not, but I have a, uh, I have a uh, cabana uh, in the back uh, that, that services the pool. And, and, you know, realizing, okay, that's about another $15,000. I'm, I'm, I'm realizing saying, okay, to me, it, it, it seems like 480 to 485 is a fair assessment. And other than that, the, uh, the additional pages are just the backdrop of all those homes that have sold the composite, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. How long have you okay. lived there? Uh, we built the home, uh, geez, 20 years ago, okay. give or take. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be happy to sell it if anyone is interested for the $590,000. <laughs> you got a finished ba <laughs> Do you have a finished basement, sir? Uh, did we have like some half and not really? Yeah, there's just there's some carpets down there and some other stuff. Okay. In the composite of transactions that you put together, um, do you have a? It doesn't say on here, but do you know specifically what time period these transactions occurred? Yeah, I think that was Kevin. Uh, Kevin, I'd say probably over the past year, year and a half. Um, you know, some of these are, are in my subdivision, so I'm well aware of those. Uh, one that just recently sold, but the others, I would say, within a within a year. And, and I have a, a realtor friend that has helped me pull, you know, pull together these composites. So they're they're fairly, you know, new transactions, so to speak. I say fairly within the past year. You know. Okay. Mm hmm Okay. Very good. If you got anything else, let us know. Otherwise. No, I just, uh, I, yeah, I think that's it. I hope that's clear. And again, I realize it's a starting point. I understand yep, that. Yep. I, I think the town has changed. You know, their 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 ratio of, of, of however you equate the taxes. But uh, you know, a 55 percent increase that's huge. One would say maybe I was undervalued. You know, possibly. But uh, it, it's just a it's a big jump nonetheless. And I'm just looking to be really looked at and treated fair and equitable amongst you know other homes that I see. So yep, I appreciate yep. the consideration for some relief here. Of course. No, no appreciate problem. it. Tom, we'll get back to you within the next few weeks and with the results. All right. Thanks again, guys. Appreciate Thanks it. Much. Thank, you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Hi, how are you? Thanks, how are you? Good, welcome to the Board of Assessment Review. So uh, just to kind of get started, I need to swear you in. So uh, do you swear that okay. the information that you're about to give is to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? Yep. Great, so just so we have it all on record, can you just state your name, uh, the property that you're to talk about and what uh, assessment you're looking for? Lindsay River, 10 Red Rose Circle, Penfield, New York, 14526. Um, I'm hoping for an assessment of my original purchase price in 2019 for $284,000 or less, depending on how today's conversation goes. Okay. Um, the, the town has reassessed you at 318600 is that correct? That is what I have down, yes. Okay. All right. Just want to make sure we all have the same information, that's all. All right, um, so I guess tell us a little bit about the house. Um, you said you just bought it in 2019. Have you done any th improvements to it? Any information along those lines that would talk about the, the, uh, the market value? Any other you know, comparable comp uh, sales, sales of other houses that are comparable, that kind of thing? Yeah, sure. Sure. Um, does the board have, um, I sent along four copies of, um, it's like a 12-page, 11-page packet that I created. Does the board have access to all of that information? It'll just be a lot easier if yeah, I can we, refer to page we, numbers and things like that. Yes, yes, we, yes we do. We got it. Okay, awesome. Um, so basically, if you want to take a look at page one, those summary statements kind of, that way you don't have to, like, dig through everything that I put together. Those summary statements really kind of hone in on 
the bulk of the work that I did when trying to look at my home um, compared to just the other homes in my neighborhood that were on the comp list. Then I also went through when the 2022 draft assessment role was released, and I went through every house in my neighborhood um, that was relative to the same size, you know, same number of bedrooms and things like that to kind of do a general comparison of just how does my home compare. Um, and what I found is that it doesn't because, as you, as you asked, we've done no renovations. The previous owners did no renovations. We're basically like bare bones, what we were given, you know, 30 years ago kind of thing, and, and things are starting to fall apart. Whereas a lot of the other houses, you know, in the neighborhood, you know, you can see on Realtor.com, you can see from, you know, previous sales and things like that, they have granite, they have hardwoods, you know, all, all those other pieces that make a house more attractive that my house does does not have. Um, so basically, my bigger, my big focus um, was that the 27 Glen Valley Drive, 47 Walnut Hill, and 10 Walnut Hill in particular are three homes in my in my neighborhood that have already been reassessed by the town of Penfield for an equal or lesser value to my home when they're all larger in square footage, larger in lot size. They have those upgrades and renovations. Um, they don't have any rotting wood on the exterior of the house. They don't have stained carpets. They don't have holes in the laminate flooring. They don't have mismatched countertops, and their bathrooms aren't pink and teal. Um, so, you know, the fact that my house, which obviously has all those negatives, um, is reassessed for the same or more than some of these houses, to me, was just kind of a big indication that the 284 would be a much more appropriate um, assessment for our home. Um, and then we also, let's see here, we, when we bought the home, we knew that we had already overpaid, but the reality was we were having a baby in a month and we had to move, so it's fine. So, but you know, that 284 that we purchased for, originally we offered 270, but we needed to get out of our old house, so we just, we took what they, what they were willing to do and you know we kind of let that go um but you know the kind of running joke in our family is that we bought a fixer-upper in a really nice neighborhood but enabled to but to be able to bring our house up to the value you know comparable to these other houses as i was reading about what these other houses have we need to basically do a full gut and remodel which we obviously won't be doing we just had a baby two years ago and i'm pregnant now with another one on the way there's there's no <laughs> renovations happening um, so that's kind of the, the, the overview of the gist. So if you guys want to jump in, um, and then I can give more details, you know, to further clarify. Thank you, Vic. Thank you for explaining. Good. We got everything here. Uh, unless there's anything... <laughs> I really tried. No, yeah, that, was, no that, was, good. that was good. If there's anything Are there sales? that's not here you want to add, but otherwise. So just, uh, I just want to make sure I'm looking at the information you gave correctly. So the, mm -hmm. the breakdown that you did, these are based on the assessed values that the town put out, is that correct? Um, so page two and page three focus on the 2022 draft role that the town just released. So page two and page, page three, I went through and I recompared. And then um, pages four, five, four and five are based on the um, initial comp PDF that um, I looked at for the pre-grievance call, mm -hmm. so I that okay. they just redocumented that. They wasn't really sure, you know, what was a better comparison for the town is based off of your original comp list prior to the, the role being released or based off of the new draft. Um, but both of them kind of showed the same thing that my home is not as nice as a lot of these other ones, and it's being assessed for, like I said, more or equal to houses that are way nicer than what I bought. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Okay. Very good. Great. All right. So what we're going to do is we'll take uh, all this information, we'll we'll review it, and come up with our conclusion. And the town will get back to you um, in the next few weeks. Okay. So then I guess my my only question that I have for you, you know, I did the pre grievance call, and basically that's how that call ended. And then I got a letter there, you know, and sure it came down a little bit, but it was nowhere near what I was hoping for it, it to come down to. So I guess my question before I let you go is. Could I get a little bit of a rationale of as to why my house is being assessed for the 318.6 so that I can highlight any additional facts before I let you go so that way I'm not disappointed again in a couple of weeks feeling like, oh, I could have said this, I could have shared this if I had known that that's what your reasoning was for the current reassessment on yeah, my home? We're just the board, and we're, we're a third party, so we're, we're not any part of the town, so you'd have to talk okay. to the assessor about that. So I don't know if the assessor wants to chime in on that well that would be great <laughs> yeah part part of the value was the previous sale of that along with other sales that we have in t in town 
So the fact that my house sold for the 284.9, that impacted being reassessed at 318.6? Yeah, for, for, re, for recent sales, you know, generally market, market values, the best indications, you know, sale price of that, and that was a 2019 sale. So we do trend sales to somewhat keep up with the market, even though we're not trending as much as the market has been going. Okay, and then so then the fact that like eight Glen Valley Drive, eight Golden Locust Circle, sixty-seven Walnut Hill, Hill, which are all very similar in square footage um, to my home, they are still assessed. I mean, still assessed for close to three hundred thousand instead of the three eighteen. But I guess I'm uh, based off of what you're saying to me. My house is still assessed for eighteen thousand more even than those homes. I, in my I house, can't like address those without well, looking at them in specific because we don't compare assessments, we look at sales. You have to look at sales. So because they haven't been sold, even though that's what the town decided they should be reassessed for based off the same sales that you're saying you used to reassess my home. I'm not sure if they use exactly the same sales or not. I can't address that right now. Right. So I, I guess those are some of the things that I'm a little bit confused by just because, you know, if if, if those houses are the same size, as mine, then and they were assessed for less, and my house was just purchased three years ago, and at the 284, and then these houses are reassessed for, you know, closer to 300. I guess if we're looking at what is equitable, I'm just a little confused as to why houses with a very similar summary would still be 18,000 less than mine. And like I said, the fact that my house has zero upgrades to it, I'm just trying, that, that's what I'm just trying to kind of rationalize in my head and understand how that process, how that process works and what I would need to be discussing with you to kind of have it not happen that way again. Because like I said, my, my house is, not to dump all over it, but it's like pretty crappy. So I'm trying to figure out, like, I bought this house for 284 already overpaid for it, and now I'm being reassessed based off of the sale prices of houses that I already know are so much nicer than my own home. So I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm being clear in, in those indications that no hardwoods, no granite, no cathedral ceilings, no deck, no patio, no, no nothing, essentially, that would make those other houses that sold for, as you said, those higher price points, they sold for those higher price points because of the market, but they also sold because they have all these things. I mean, some of these houses that were on the comp list, they have second kitchens and finished basements and in-ground pools and gazebos, which my house has none of. So I just want to make sure that I'm being compared to like a bare bones house because that's what my house is and not some of these houses that are, you know, pretty gorgeous, to be completely honest. Okay. I, I think the board has all your information now, so... Nope. Okay. All right. Okay. So you said in a couple of weeks I should, um, will it be a letter, a phone call? A uh, letter. A letter. Okay. All right. And you said a couple of weeks, so beginning of June? Uh, might be a little bit longer than that. It's hard to say as the, as the whole process gets through, but it'll be in, you know, the next few weeks. We don't have an exact date. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. And at that point, if um, things do not kind of turn in, in our favor a little bit more here, um, is there any recourse or at that, at that point I just have to sit with this? So you're allowed to go to a small claims assessment review. There, there is a link on our website oh for it, but you know, first find out what, your, what the board decision is. Yeah, no, no, I definitely, um, I'm hoping that we can all work together on this. So I'm hoping that won't be necessary, especially having a, one week old by the sounds of things at that point in time, but I just want to make sure I understand the process so I can start preparing in the event that that has to happen. Yep. Okay. Very good. Thanks very much. All right. Thank you so much for your time, everyone. Right, Have a thanks. wonderful day. Have Thank a great you. day. Yep. Bye-bye. Sister's daughter's house. And good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Board of Assessment Review. Uh, to get started, I just need to swear you in. So do you swear okay. that the information that you're about to give us is, to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? Yes, I do. 
Great. So that we have it on record, can you just give us your name, uh, the property that you're here to talk about, and the assessment you're looking to get? My name is Steven Swetman. The address is 102 Huntington Meadow, and I'm looking to get the property assessed around $325,000. Okay. And in the town just reassessed it at, what, 345 one? Yes, sir. Okay. So can you tell us a little bit about the property and uh, what uh, sort of comparable sales you looked at to, to come to your conclusion? Sure, I appreciate your time today. I bought the house in August of 2017 at $280,000. <laughs> Our house was listed twice on the market. Uh, this was during the hot market, it was taken down and then it was put back up and I bought it on the last day of the 90 day contract that they had with the realtor. Uh, the reason for that was the house is outdated got an older roof on a majority of the house, even though they advertise it as a newer roof that was only on a quarter of the house. The furnace was 20 plus years old, even though they said it was a newer furnace. Uh, veneer cabinets, outdated appliances, flooring that needs to be refinished, original tile in the house. Uh, had some issues in the basement with some water that backed up and the chimney needed some work. But I did end up buying it for $280,000. A few years later, my neighbor right next door who has the same size house during the hot market bought his house for 312500 which was two years later in the same hot market, and that was sold by a realtor who owned the house, so he sold his own house, so you know he's going to get top dollar. That was a move-in ready house. You can move right in, no painting, newer roof, windows, everything, and that was 312500 Another neighbor of mine bought a desirable ranch, 2,666-square-foot ranch on almost an acre of property backed up to the woods in a private cul-de-sac, doesn't have the 2,200 cars traveling through like we do on Huntington Meadow. Uh, I've submitted a few comps there for some recent sales. They vary in the price of square footage that's been going on. Some from $142 a square foot down to $121 a square foot. But the thing to remember is these are all houses that were up for sale. They know it's a hot market. People don't want to have to come into a house and redo things, fix things, paint things. All this stuff's updated for these houses that are available. I'm a single income with my wife and two kids, work hard, do a lot of the work myself to try to save money. I keep my house very clean, tidy, the yard, work on the landscaping. I like being a resident of Penfield, even though we don't have all the services other towns have, especially school, got to pay for preschool out of pocket and leaf and tree pickup, uh, just based on talking to other people. I've understood that a lot of, pretty much everyone I've spoken to has had their reduction of nineteen to thirty thousand dollars, including my one neighbor with that ranch. That's one of the most desirable houses right now. A twenty six hundred and sixty six square foot ranch he was able to settle with you guys at hundred and twenty dollars a square foot on a ranch that everybody wants, private woods and a call to sack. So I just think it's fair to uh, be in the same ballpark with my neighbors. Very good. Complete report. If you don't have anything yeah. else, we'll go through everything, and uh, the town will get back to you within a few weeks with the results. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much for everything. Take care now. Take care. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, is this Kevin? Uh, it is, yes. Welcome to the Hi, board. Kevin, of, I'm Blake. Hi, Blake. Welcome to the board of assessment review. Uh, before we get started, I just need to swear you in. So, do you swear that the information that you're about to give is, to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? You bet. Great. So that we have it on record, um, please just state your name, the property that you're uh, here to talk about, and then what you know the assessment that you're looking for is. Sure thing. So, Kevin, um, my name is Blake Fridman. I'm here to talk about my house at 61 Alberta Drive, Penfield. And uh, I'm looking to get an assessment lower than what has been uh, sent to me as 2000 or 235,400. Um, I believe that's overly, overly assessed. So um, I'm looking to get that lowered. Okay, and you put on your application that you're looking for that to be at 200 even? That is correct. Okay, 
Can you tell us a little bit about the house uh, and you know any comparables that you might have looked at and other sales that uh, are kind of giving you an indication of market price? Kevin, yeah, you bet. We got a lot to talk about. Um, I'm assuming it's unfortunate that we're not face to face, but uh, I'm assuming you guys have copies of everything I sent over. We do, yes. Um, awesome, great. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start with the general notes document, which might be, I think it's the second document in the packet order. Um, okay. We've been here. I, I talked about I purchased the house in 2007. Since then, there have been no major upgrades. Outside, we have had bathrooms updated. Uh, the house has two bathrooms. One's on the upstairs, one's on the downstairs. Um, so the downstairs one isn't near any bedrooms, but it, you know, it is a full bath. The house is somewhere between 1,800 and 1,900 square feet. Um, its kitchen was last updated in 1992. And I believe the very last document, I won't try to have you guys flip around too much. You guys can certainly validate everything that was sent to you, uh, you know, in the paperwork. But the kitchen was last updated in 1992 has a 1991 fridge. Uh, the paperwork, again, will spell that out. I have paperwork from the original owner uh, given to me when I bought the house in 2007, when my wife and I bought the house. So it's got a 1991 fridge. It was last, the kitchen itself was last done in 1992. Um, cabinets need some refinishing. I have paint peeling, molding falling off some of the cabinets. You know, I've had to re some stuff. Floors need refinishing. And I think it's the second to last packet, and we'll look at that a little bit later on. It has pictures. You can see, you see a lot of this. Um, electric stove top frame is peeling. Um, the kitchen needs to be redone. And the average kitchen price to remodel is somewhere between 12000 12, 35000 according to um, HGTV or Home Advisor. So that's in here. The house has a boiler. There's no duct work. Um, so there's no air conditioning. Uh, there's a quote, and I, I included a copy of a quote I have uh, that I got two years ago to get mini splits put in. Um, that would cost $25,000, which I have not done. That's that's bit out of my price range. Um, there's windows throughout the house that need fogging. The windows were are 30 years old. Again, that's also in the notes from the uh, prior homeowner. Um, windows on average cost about $600 to replace. Roof is 16 years old out of 20, um, so it's about three quarters of the way through its lifespan. It's doing okay right now, no issues yet, um, you know. But I am looking to be towards the end of life on that. Garage floor needs replacing. Um, that's in the pictures picture packet as well. We'll take a look at that. Uh, there's an old crude and converted breezeway has wood paneling. Um, to get rid of that paneling and get drywall put up or repaired. Um, is needed and something hopefully hopefully we'll get to eventually. Uh, the ceiling in there is, is a little bit wonky too. Another thing you can see in the picture. Um, if you turn that page over where I'm talking about house notes, uh, the last thing I have on here that I want to mention at this point is just the boiler. The boiler was replaced in 2008, so we bought the house in 2007. So the boiler was in decent shape. It failed in February of 2000, in January of 2008. Um, so we have, we have a, uh, 2008 boiler, it's 80% efficiency, it's 40 years old. Average lifespan of a boiler is around 15 years. Um, our boiler this past season uh, started a few months ago. I started making clanking noises, but hopefully hopefully, can still withstand a couple more years. We'll see. Um, so that's, that's about the house. So I'm just going to keep going through unless you guys got questions. Yep. Yep, that sounds good. Okay. So comparables, what I did is using the Penfield Valid Sales List data, and hopefully hopefully this is the next item uh, within your packet. Yes. Um, I, I just went to the Excel sheet and got three comparables. Um, they're all roughly about the same year built. So my house was built either in 1961 or 63. I'm not entirely sure, but it was the early 60s. Um, again, it's between 89 and 200 square feet. It's a half an acre lot. Um, I looked for houses with two baths, and so I pulled those those houses. And if you guys are looking at the paper, and it's you know it's got copy and paste of an Excel sheet, uh, you can see like the sale prices of the the houses that I'm comparing it to. And you have 179.9, 225, and 190. And these are you know spread out. I think the sale dates are. Let's see here. Do I have them on here? So price, so they yep, they're between 2020 and 2021. Um, 
All these, I've added two columns to the far right of these, uh, uh, two columns to the far right of the spreadsheet. And I just added some notes. And I also added links, which unfortunately, because these are paper copies, you can't click on, but I'm happy to email you guys links as well, to the houses in general when they were listed for sale. So you can take a look and see the pictures. And all of them you would see, uh, they all have air conditioning, which is nice. And again, air conditioning for me is a $25,000 upgrade. Uh, and they also all have updated kitchens or at least kitchen appliances. Um, my appliances are old. The only thing in my kitchen, not old appliance wise, um, is really my dishwasher. So um, these, these are what I compare to. Now the sale prices for these, I looked and I just took the average and it comes out a little bit less than $200,000. So again, the sale dates are between 2020 and 2021. And the average price uh, of these three sales comes out to about 198 something. So for me, I'm taking a look at all the improvements that need to be done to my house uh, to bring it a little bit more up to date because it needs a lot of work. There haven't been major updates, again, outside of the bathroom. And if I start taking a look at the AC, the kitchen, the windows, and I have quite a few foggy, foggy windows, they're all you know 30 years old. Um, if I take a look at that, I'm looking at a minimum of like 40,000 to maybe like 65,000 to update. And that doesn't include if I start throwing in like the boiler might be on its way out because it's clanking and it's near end of life, the roof or the garage floor, um, and things like the breezeway modeling. So there's quite a bit of work that needs to be done. If I go to the next item, you're going to see, uh, hopefully again, the, the packet order is the same. You're going to see the, the air conditioning quote where you can get the mini splits. Um, this was in July of 2020, and this was from AirQuip. I had two other companies take a look, and they all came in at about the same pricing. Um, the quotes to get AC are added are 24,000 and 26,000 on, on this one quote, and they're all, they're all the same. Um, so that's that. And then the next, next package should be the pictures. And in the pictures, if you look at the first picture, you have the kitchen. And this is one view of the kitchen. We'll take another look at the kitchen uh, in a minute. And the only thing you're gonna see uh, in this is just, you're gonna see a um, electric stove top and again, like saying, you know, there needs to be some work there. The framing is, is peeling. Sometimes the stove top doesn't turn off. And I got to go downstairs all the way, and I got to go off downstairs and switch off the breaker for a while and then turn back on. Um, the floor's a little bit in rough shape. You might not see so much in this picture. You're going to see in the next one. And the cabinets, you know, nothing's been redone again since the 90s when the prior, early 90s, when the prior owner did it. Go to the second page. You're going to see more work on the cabinet. You're going to see more, um, more picture of uh, displaying cabinets. You're going to see the oven. Um, you're going to see the floor. The floor in the bottom center, you can see, is definitely wearing out. So we have hardwood floors. Um, they were last done, and I think that's on the original paperwork, too, and that was probably early 90s, around 1991. Um, the refrigerator, the refrigerator is a 1991 refrigerator. That is on its way out. That will need to be replaced. Um, I don't know, certainly within the next year or so. The light went out in it recently, and it wasn't a light bulb change. The electric started going. So it's been a great fridge. It's lasted a while, but it's on its way out. Um, so the kitchen, you can see the kitchen is just, it's an old kitchen. The next room, or the next picture you're going to see is the breezeway. If you look at the top of the breezeway, you're going to see that the ceiling is uneven. That's how it came with the house, and that's why I'm saying with the breezeway and with the wood paneling, um, there's quite a bit of drywall work that needs to be done both behind the, behind the wood paneling as well as in the ceiling. I mean, the ceiling's not even even. So you might look at that picture and take a look at the ceiling and be like, hey, something looks a little off. It must have been the picture of the camera. It's not. It's actually how the ceiling is, just like little wrinkles, for lack of better terms in it. Um, and then we get to the last picture, which is the garage. And, you know, you probably have a picture of about um, half my garage floor, but it all looks the same. Um, it's just, you can tell that they, they put some, another layer of concrete over at some point, but that's been peeling off. Um, and so the whole garage floor is, is, you know, starting to get destroyed, you know, wear and tear from Northeast winters. And, uh, that's going to need to be redone. So I think. All right. You got You got to, if you could wrap everything. things up, you got about one or one minute. Just so you know. Oh, 
like, well, I didn't know. Nobody oh, yeah. told me. <laughs> oh, they were supposed <laughs> to tell. Yeah, we I'm, ten minutes, and then we got to go on to the to the next person. Yeah, you've done a great job. Oh, but yeah, no, you you actually given us a lot of information. Yeah. So this is yeah. actually you put a, put a lot of good work into this packet. Yep. Pictures are very descriptive. Awesome. Well, then let me ask you guys: Do you have any other questions? And can you tell me what next steps are? We, I don't think we have any questions, but the next step is you'll hear back from the town within a few weeks and get the results at that time. All right. When's the latest I'll hear back so I know if I should call? Not you know, sure when. The, my guess would be latest, maybe end of June, but I, I'm just guessing because there, there's a lot of things that they got to work out. We got This is a real heavy year because of tons of people are, are coming in, and we're not sure when that's going to end. So uh, they, mm -hmm. they don't really have an exact date. I would, I would guess by end of June. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. Well, thank you guys. I appreciate your time. And I want to say, please reach out if you have any additional questions. I hope to hear from you soon. All right. Okay. okay. Thanks so much. Thank you. Did a good job. All right. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye bye. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. All right. Uh, well, welcome to the Board of Assessment Review. Uh, to get started, let me uh, first swear you in. So uh, do you swear that the information that you're about to give is, to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? Yes. Great. All right. So that we have it on record, um, I want you to, to just give us your name, the property you're here to talk about, uh, what assessment you're looking to get. And then I just want to uh, let you know that it, we're pretty much um, under a pretty strict time frame today, so we're, we're limiting the yep. calls to about 10 minutes. So, um, okay, yeah, no problem. Um, my name is Thomas Cariola. I, uh, my address is 84 Stone Ledge Way. I um, currently, my, my requested assessment would be uh, 318 market value and 271 assessed value. Okay. Mm -hmm. You got the 318. All right. Um, and so I guess you bought the house back in 2019, is that correct? Correct. All right. Um, and so what can you tell us about the uh, sort of the market comps that would suggest that the uh, market price is, is 318? Okay. So uh, were you provided the Excel spreadsheet uh, printout that I, I gave to your office? Yes, yes we were. Okay, so I, I only took, so there's a lot of houses on sale over the last two years. I only took the sales from um, 19 and 20, or I'm sorry, 20 and 21. Yep. And if you, if you look at the, um, the acreage, the square footage and everything, uh, the acreage average is identical to what my acreage is. The, the cost per square foot is averaging $149.83. If you take that and multiply it by my square footage, I'm at um, 318.995, which I, I show in that um, that document, which is I think a fair market value. I don't think um, you know that that's the that's pretty straightforward because they're all comps on my street, and you know I know that our house is the smallest house on the street and, and doesn't have as the nicest amenities um, compared to the other ones. So I, th I think the the 318,995 that I show in the box is a is a fair market value based on the comps. Do you believe uh, that you possibly paid too much because you know values have certainly gone up a lot in the last couple of years? I do not believe that I paid too much, and and I went through this assessment process last year, um, and actually had the house assessed uh, at 318, okay. which was a fair market value last year as well. Okay. All right. Any other information you want to share with us, or is that it? Um, so, uh, so what you guys have is the assessment from it last year. Uh, you have the the buying information from 2019, and you have the comps. And everything, you know, is is pretty apparent that the the value that I, I calculated at 318.995 is is fair. Um, I, I really don't think there's yeah, the, the data is there, so I don't think there's really anything else okay. that I need to say unless you have additional questions for me. I don't believe so. I think we're good. We'll go over everything, and then the uh, town gets our results, and they'll get back to you sometime in the next few weeks. 
I, I really appreciate it. Is it going to be Great. email, phone, letter? It'll be, le it be a letter. It'll be a letter. Okay. Yep. Great. Well, I, I truly appreciate your time. Thank you, everyone. Thanks very much. And have a great rest of the day. All right. You thanks, too. you, too. Bye. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Hey, good morning. What's going on? How are you doing today? Oh, not bad. That's good. North Carolina, vacation. <laughs> you're, you're in. You're in North Carolina. In North Carolina, right now, in the Outer Banks. It's cold. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's, it's above forty this morning. <laughs> yeah. It's oh. not that bad. Yeah, the first thing we got here it was ninety-six, and today it's in the upper sixties. But it's still, it's a little cloud cover, but still good drinking weather. <laughs> <laughs> Any day that ends in Y, right? So, um, got it. so let me uh, let me first start off by uh, swearing you in. Um, do you swear the information right. you're about to give us is, to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? That's correct. Yes. Great. So just so we have it all on record, uh, can you just state your name, the property that you're uh, here to talk about, and what you think the assessment should be? Yeah. So it's James Blazy, and we're talking about 42 Bainbridge Lane. And uh, Penfield, New York, one four five two six. All right. And so um, it looks like the town, if I have my records correct, uh, has you assessed at four hundred and ninety three thousand, and you're looking to right. have that adjusted down to three hundred and ninety one thousand. Is that correct? Yeah. So yeah, that was my original. Day. So I originally purchased the property for I believe three fifteen. And uh, over the years, it's creeped up, which is understandable. I get it. You know, values go up. But to go from 391000 up to 493000 I'd like to be back at that 391 because um, just, just, just my personal, I don't know if this is on the record, off the record, is I understand what's going on in the economy and stuff like that right now with inflation and with rising prices and home values. But I just don't, I, I, I don't foresee it sticking that way. And to think I could throw my house on the market for 500000 and get 500000 right now, I, I don't believe that. So that's kind of why we're having this conversation. I think 391 although in my personal opinion, I'd like it to be lower than that, but I think that's fair. So I, I'm here to kind of talk about what I think is fair. Okay. And so I know you gave us a, a lot of data in the packet, but if you can kind of talk a little bit about the... Uh, comparables that you use to uh, come to your assessment that so three, 391 is, is right? Yeah, so the 391, where, like I said, where I came up with that 391 is that's where you have me now. So I, 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 like I said, I'm okay staying there. The assessments we got, I went out and looked for other houses that were right around the 3,000 square foot, 3,100 square foot, and I looked at their sale prices in the last uh, year and a half. I think it's 21 and 22. And you can see, I think the highest one I handed you was 419. Um, the house, like I said, is 20 years old. It still has the original roof on it. Um, we haven't really done too too much to it, with the exception of the kind of stuff. Um, when my assessment went up from 340 to 392, it's we put a pool in the backyard, but nothing crazy. Let's put it that way. I know my neighbor's house, his assessment, which is directly to the um, west of me, his assessment just went up to 400000 from whatever the hell he was at before. And like I said, to think that my house is worth $100,000 more directly next door. He has a bigger lot. He has uh, more greenery. He's got the same thing. He's got a pool. He's got everything else. So that's what I'm basing where I think the 391 is a fair assessment value. Okay. <coughs> Very any, good. Do we any have questions? Do we have any sales, or am I missing? I think. I yeah. No. Oh yeah. The, okay. I'll yep. that. Yeah. He's got. Some he's sales. got sales okay. in the packet. Yep. Great. Well, I guess we do. I don't have them right now, but I guess we do have several sales years we can review and go over everything you said, yep. and then we'll. Uh... Yeah. In the sales reviews, I, I gave you a range anywhere. I believe I don't have it in front of me. Uh, I believe from that three hundred thousand dollar marker to the highest one was four nineteen. 
So coming in at, at, at 391, where the where the rest of them were anywhere from 329, 359, I think that's that's more than a fair. If you guys are feeling generous and you guys want to come down for a beer, I mean, I'll take 340, 345. <laughs> but it, that's up to you guys if you want to make the run. <laughs> I'd love to. Well, we will go over everything, and so, then uh, the town yeah. gets back to you within a few weeks through the mail. Okay, I have one more, I have one more quick sure. question for you. Yeah, sure. Um, I, I don't know if you guys can answer this for me or not, but I'm a full-time fireman with the city of Rochester. I know there is a tax reduction for uh, police and fire. Is that? Do I have to belong to the town of uh, Penfield or the town of Webster Fire Department to be eligible for that tax exemption? Or is that go based on my career? I don't know if anybody knows the answer to that. I, I was a volunteer fireman for Ridge Culver for 20 plus years in a and then I've been a full-time career fireman for 21 years. But I didn't know if 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 that was uh, eligible to get on, or is that a tax question more than a assessment question? I spoke to a Penfield fireman this morning, and he told me he's getting. I think he said a 10 percent break on probably town taxes. Yeah. I don't know. That's on the town taxes. So he lives I've in never Penfield. applied for it. I'm not, yeah, I'm not looking for a, a handout, but I figured anything anything helps. Let's put it that way. Yep. Go for it. All right, so I guess I'll, I'll ask the tax office this. But like I said, you guys are more than welcome to, to come on down for a drink right. if you like. If you, you fly know, us down, we'll consider it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, Thank you. thanks Thank so you much. much. Thanks so much. Take care. All right. All right, guys. Have a great day. All right, you too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm okay, and I hope you're similar. Well, that's good. Yeah, we're doing all right. Okay. All right. Well, welcome to the welcome to the board of assessment review. Uh, to get things started, I just need to swear you in. So, do you swear that the information that you're about to give is, to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? Yes, sir. I do. Great. Thanks. So, uh, so we have it on the record. Um, can you just uh, state your name, the property that you're here to talk about, and the um, assessment that you're looking to get? Yes, sir. I can. My name is Mark A. Spade, S-P-A-D-E, and I live and represent number 2323 Bryden Park in the town of Webster with a zip code of 14580, and I've resided there for the last 22 years and seven months. Okay, that's that's a long time. <laughs> it is, it is. It, it, I'm sorry, your, your name? Uh, my name is Kevin. Kevin, yeah, and uh, quite honestly, Kevin, it's a uh, house... Residence number three in the neighborhood, so I've been there a long time, uh, three decades, actually. I've also owned a house on uh, Meadows End, and my first home was across the street on, uh, excuse me, that would Meadows End, and that would be Rosebud Lane. Sorry, it's been a while. Okay, great. And I'm a bit uh, elderly, but, so I apologize for the so are we. <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, all right, so based on the, the records I have, uh, just to make sure we're correct, the town has assessed you at 441400 and you're looking for a reduction of that to 350000 Is that correct? That is accurate, yes, sir. Okay. All right, so um, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you came to that conclusion that 350 should be the uh, market value of your home, and we'll, uh, we'll take it from there. Yeah, when I bought the house in uh, 2000, my uh, price was 229.9. Uh, I also happened to have the great luxury of living next to the, one of the town's many retention ponds uh, that flow downstream. I believe mine originates up uh, Jackson Road and pretty much terminates right outside my bedroom window. Cattails, uh, all the overgrowth that the town sprays annually with a herbicide, um, which quite honestly uh, I find egregious, um, 
they've yet to spray it, but the lily pod gets so covered that the fact of the matter is the town necessitates spraying it because it becomes a silt pond uh, and it will be within the next 30 days and is annually, as I just described. So they poison the pond. Kill, there's a fish kill that uh, used to happen, but I think they've wiped out all the natural species in the last several years. So we look at the fish kill that we did, uh, let's say, a decade ago. But nonetheless, as far as the individual residents, I still have the original carpeting, light fixtures, cabinets that were installed in the house was erected in 1990. Um, the only upgrade that I've done to the home interior-wise was to replace the countertops in the kitchen and master bath strictly. Other than that, the house is in the same condition that it was originally erected uh, 32 years ago, with the exception of several interior paint jobs. Uh, flooring's all the same. I haven't changed not the tile, not even the carpeting. Um, just can't see my way through the economics to investing in the property. Uh, as Realtor.com disseminated on April the 27th, it was published uh, in Newsweek, this pandemic that uh, we're currently exiting, if we haven't already, did cause a artificial spike in home values across the nation, of which in metropolitan areas defined by more than 500,000 residents, I believe Tampa, was the largest increase on the East Coast, and Tampa came in at 36% uh, increase in value. My increase, uh, mathematically, marginalizes out at 48.5 from last December, from last assessment. Realtor.com also, in that same article, as I aforementioned, did state that this bubble is a temporary scenario. I would assume that Realtor.com is an industry expert in valuing real estate, not only locally but nationally. And they rank the top 10 metropolitan areas, as I defined, by a population of 500,000 or more. And Rochester, New York, was ranked number two for forecasted attrition in home value. Behind Toledo, Ohio, second above Detroit, Michigan. I didn't realize, but I guess that maybe Rochester is considered the Rust Belt. But nonetheless, the increase in value of 144000 above my prior assessment, I believe, is uh, excessive and egregious. Um, the bubble is starting to, to burst, as we know. Not only was it pandemic-induced, but it was also artificially inflated due to subprime interest rates or prime interest rates at 2.5 two years ago, which we all know. I assume you're a real estate professional. Is that the right assumption for me to make in the context of this conversation? I believe that would be correct. Okay, very good. I appreciate you confirming that for me. So I believe you gentlemen and ladies, because I can't see, but I believe you folks are paid for this service to the town of Penfield, or is this uh, gratis? Paid quite minimally, believe me. It was, okay. it was un, unpaid <laughs> until well. probably 10 years ago. I get it. I don't think anybody's getting rich on this, uh, so that's not my position on this. Right. So, would you, would you, would you by any chance, because as a board, we have to like look at sales data. Do you have any sales or anything? Because, you know, we need to. Well, my neighborhood's relatively stable. So houses do not transfer with any level of frequency. As a matter of fact, through the topical research that I was able to perform unassisted, um, I believe that the Brighton Park Harvest Walk neighborhood is probably the most stable as far as lack of resale in the whole Penfield district. Um, I think we've had three houses transfer in the last uh, 18 months. And quite honestly, I am am of belief through information and research that those folks transferred because they wanted to get out at the height of the market and avoid this um, pending increase in taxes. Uh, the pandemic forced a lot of people out of business. I was in the same industry for 38 years from 1982 through the year 2020. And uh, believe it or not, I was a door-to-door -door salesman selling commercial print product. Um, I don't know if any of you 
individual has ever had the opportunity to do door to door corporate sales, but it's a non existent entity as of the past two years. That's not on you folks, nor am I alleging that it is, but the fact of the matter is that the pan- pandemic, is, uh, I know it to be, forced me out of business, forced me to uh, liquidate a family business uh, of 46 years, although I owned and operated it for 38. So at 61 years old, I'm holding out for uh, Social Security, which I'll become eligible for in September. I don't know how $1,900 a month is going to cut it, but we are surviving. On, there, uh, basic... and, and I, I apologize. <clears throat> We're at a pretty strict time limit here. Anything else you want to add on the, the assessment situation here? Or we probably got to wrap it up soon. Actually, the, okay. the average increase in residential values or assessments, I believe, is close to 30%. So if everybody goes up 30%, your taxes probably won't change. Yeah, well, I mean, I would probably not be having this conversation with you folks if it was 30%, but 48% puts me pretty well in the top by 10 percentile. Uh, I, I just divided 441.4 by 350. It comes out 26% increase. Yes, no, sir. Prior assessment was at 300. 350 is the requested relief, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. You're, yes, you're right. I apologize. So, yeah, okay. So, and, I, and I know you, you folks would probably like to hustle us through this process, but I don't think I've approached my 15 minutes yet. So, as I said, you guys uh, are paid, so you have a fiduciary responsibility to be within the realm of accuracy. So here's my offer, because you're all real estate professionals. If any of you folks would like to buy my house for 10% less, in the alleged assessment of 444000 I would welcome the offer for 402 today. I'd love to be able to afford that. I'm afraid <laughs> I'm, I, I'm off the table on that. <laughs> yep. Thank you, but no thanks. Yep. So point nine, I mean, you guys are all real estate professionals. Point nine is not a realistic price for me to transfer it to any one of the five of you? There's three of us. There's three of us. Okay, I apologize. I can't see it. So nobody wants to buy it at four hundred four thousand today. No. Okay. Well, as I stated twice, you have a fiduciary responsibility because you are paid to be within a realm of accuracy. So I think that it is reasonable and fair for me to appeal with the request that my assessment be leveled at three fifty at this particular time, gentlemen. Okay. All right. All right. We will well, go over all the information and the town will get back to you within a few weeks with a letter. Yeah, and please uh, as you are doing the review, do be conscious that as I stated and I can testify to, I have the original carpeting in the house and the original floors, the original cabinets mm-hmm. and the original light fixtures, interior and exterior from the build of 1990. We will consider all that without yep. a doubt. Definitely take it all into account. Sure to appreciate it. I look forward to hearing to you folks. I'm sure we can come to a reasonable and amicable arrangement. Okay. Thanks very much. Great. Thank you. For, have Thank a great day. Thank you for day. coming in. Thank you. Bye now. Bye-bye. Okay. Hello, good afternoon. Hi. Hi, how are you today? Good, how are you? Doing good. All right, well, welcome to the Board of Assessment Review. Um, Before we get started, I just need to swear you in. So uh, do you swear that the information you're about to give is, to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? Yeah, I do. Great. So that we have it on record, um, can you just please state your name, the property that you're here to talk about, and what you're uh, looking to get from an assessment perspective? So my name is Linda Mazzuchetti. I live at 52 Blue Ridge Road in Penfield, um, and I'm looking to reduce my assessment down to 146400 
Okay, and the town currently assessed you at 168,000? Correct, it was 17700. I talked to somebody on the phone and then I got the notice that you reduced the $2,700. Okay, so you, all right, so you already got an initial reduction from 177 to 168, did I hear that right? Um, it was 17700. Oh, sorry, 170, and okay. And they reduced it to 168000 which is a net change of $2,700. Okay, all right, very good. Yep. Okay, and so uh, tell us a little about the, the house. Um, did, when did you purchase it? I purchased it August of 2020. Okay. It, the town, I live in a townhouse, and there's a big building where four of us live in a townhouse. We all have the same exact square footage of 1324. We all um, get assessed on land is 0 0.02, just what our actual townhouse is sitting on. So we don't have any other land other than where we're, what we're sitting on for land-wise. Um, so of the four townhouses in my building, I'm the only one with a three-bedroom. Everybody else has two. But I guess my, my concern is like my neighbor at 48 Blue Ridge got assessed up to 136,400 and he has a two bedroom. And then my other neighbor also in the building uh, at 56, I believe is 142,000. And I understand I have an extra bedroom, but I don't think it should be worth $31,600 more based on my neighbor's assessment. Can I ask what you paid for the property in 2020? 156. 780. I paid 156,780. Okay. Another three bedroom at 113 sold for 127,000 back in March of 2020 before all the chaos of shortage of houses, the pandemic. I mean, I think we all know that whoever bought their house in 2020 after March when the pandemic starts overpaid for their house. I know I overpaid for my house, but I needed a house. I was living in a, not a good situation. So I, had, I was forced to buy a house at that time frame. Okay, so um, the way that, uh, you know, we kind of obviously look at these is through the uh, comparable sales. Um, is there any uh, information you have that you can you want to talk to us about in terms of comparable sales of other other properties? Well, I mean, I just told you the one on one thirteen went for one hundred twenty seven thousand March of two thousand twenty. Um, there's a bunch of ones on Blue Ridge. There are two bedrooms. Um, there was one that was. In 2019 for 103, 2020 July was 113,000. Those are two bedrooms, but I mean, I don't understand. I mean, I talked to my realtor and she told me that to have an extra bedroom will increase your value of your house like 10 grand. So I'm not really sure how I got such a large reassessment versus my neighbors. I mean, my assessment was originally 62% increase, my one neighbor at 48 was 27% increase. And I just feel like because I'm a new home buyer, I'm gonna penalize, and there the people that have been here for many years, their assessments didn't go up as much as mine did. And I just don't think it's fair. I mean, it's basically okay. the same building. We have the same square footage. All I have is the one extra bedroom. And I don't know about my other neighbor at 60 Blue Ridge, what they got assessed for, reassessed for. I don't know that lady, and I didn't feel comfortable asking. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's fair. Um, and I guess my problem is also is I have 0 .02 acres of land. I have no land other than what I don't have a lawn. I mean, I do have a lawn, but it's not mine. I get assessed for $27,000 for my land assessment, where I just went to trying to find some kind of land that's kind of the same size, but like Beacon Hills North, which is right the road right next to me, had uh, 0.19 acres 
which is a lot more than 0 0.02 acres, and their assessment for their land was 29.5. Now there's only like a $2,000 difference, well, 3,000, well, um, $2,500 difference. I just, I just think the land assessment is so high for the little bit that I have. I, point, I have a 0 0.02 acre. You probably shouldn't be too concerned with that. I mean, it's basically the, the total assessment that we're concerned and working with. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't lose sleep over that if I were you. <laughs> the, the land part. All right. Yeah, the land, the <laughs> land part, so. the land part. Don't worry about the land assessment. That's, that's <laughs> meaningless in the whole scheme of things. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, I guess also one, my last little thing is my brother's got a ranch on Embury Road. Granted, it's not a townhouse. It's not a colonial townhouse. It's a ranch which is a ranch with a half, almost a half-acre land, is in more demand than my townhouse, I can tell you right now. And his assessment, reassessment, went up to 172.8. Now, how can my assessment be 168 for something? I don't have a ranch house, which is in high demand, and I don't have any land, which people like a yard for the most part. Some do, some don't. But, that, I mean, I just don't get the rhyme and reason. And when I talk to somebody initially, they even said, wow, that's kind of high. And I'm like, well, how did you guys come about this? And, oh, well, the computer did it. Well, honestly, I don't think the computer's I don't, being very fair. Like, I, I mean, I don't understand why my other neighbors in the same complex, same footage, other than one bedroom, has a much lower assessment than I do. Right. And and unfortunately, we, like, we can't help you with that because we're, we're a third party here. We're just residents of the town also, and we don't work for the town, so we're just trying to listen to these hearings and try and work these out. So we can't answer any assessment there, questions. There's some sales here we can look at that right. try to figure this out. It's hard to compare. So what, am I, what am I talking to? What am I trying to get out of this then if you can't help me? Well, I didn't no, say that. That's not what we said. We said we oh. can't help you with the assessment questions. We're trying to help oh. you with, right, we're trying to help you question. with okay. the value of your property. Yes, yes, that's what we're trying to help you with. So we'll look everything over. If we've gotten everything from you, we'll uh, go over everything and put our findings to the town. The town will get back to you within a few weeks. It just doesn't seem like the value of your home is it's not in sync with my building. My Mine is way much higher than everybody else's. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Well, I hope I hear good news. All right. We, we hear what you're saying. Thank, thanks for coming. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Good. Well, welcome to the Board of Assessment Review. So before Thank we get Thank you for having me. Yeah, our pleasure. Well, before we get started, let me just swear you in. So okay. uh, do you swear that the information that you're about to give is, to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? I do. Great. So just so we have it on record, uh, can you just please state your name and the property that you are here to talk about and the um, assessment that you are looking to get? Okay. So my name is Maureen Capron. The address that I am referring to is 128 New Wickham Drive, Penfield, New York, 14526. And the assessment that I believe is a fair assessment is 176, 176,000, as opposed to the 205,000 that is being proposed. Okay, great. So um, what information, um, I know we have a packet of information that you provided us, but um, if you could kind of just summarize for us the information that you looked at to come to your conclusion of 176,000. Okay, perfect. So I sent the list um, off of your website of all the sales for New Wickham Drive. Um, I believe that I highlighted the original copy of all the even number homes because those are all the homes that are Concord Square, which is where I live. The odd number homes on New Wickham Drive are across in a different um, uh, association. 
And the average price of the 15 sales that I have listed and highlighted in my area, the average price is 176 And that even takes into consideration the homes that are more square footage than my townhouse. And it also has in there the ranch homes, which clearly sell for more. So I did not take those out when I figured the average. Uh, they should have been taken out. But even with those in there, the average is 176000 So I not only compared for three homes like your requirement, there's data for 15 different homes that are all pretty similar to mine, except for the, the things that I pointed out where the, some of them are more square footage. Um, anything that sold over that average price, is the square footage of the ranch that was taken into consideration. And I just don't understand where 205 is coming from. I mean, I'm using the data that you have on your website, sales all the way up until January of this year. I, I don't know where 205 is coming from. Okay, could I, could I ask you just the condition of your uh, home? Because the, the town has it as being in very good condition. Could you describe that a little bit for me? Sure, I can describe it. I, nothing has been done since I purchased a home five years ago. You have the appraisal that was done five years ago when I bought the home, and that appraisal came in at 165. When I bought the home, yes, very good condition. Um, it doesn't. It, a couple of things could be updated, but good condition for what I bought it for. And when I bought it, it was assessed at 128. I paid 164, and they immediately raised my assessment to match that, which I did not fight because that's what my appraisal was for. That's what I felt was fair market value. So in five years, we are now trying to put it up another 40,000, and I don't see where your documentation can can justify that. And based on the documentation that I provided. Yes, I do believe that it goes up. It goes up to the average price within my within my complex. I mean, I I have 15 properties I'm comparing it to. It's not like I'm just grasping at straws here, and that's the that's the fair price. Do I think that the homes are out of control and selling for well over what they're priced at? Absolutely, but that's the market right now. That doesn't mean that a realtor is going to come in and put my home up for 205 because they're going to tell me it's not it's not going to it's not worth that. Will it go over because people are in a bidding war right now? Absolutely. But that's a bidding war. And if that market adjusts in a couple of years, are you going to come back and lower my assessment when the market doesn't warrant that anymore? You provided some very good data here. Yep, we got some good information, and we will check it all out, go over everything, and then the town will uh, send you out a letter within probably about four or five weeks. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Good afternoon. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the Board of Assessment Review. Thank you. So before we get started, I just want to go through and swear you in. So uh, do you swear that the information that you are about to give is, to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? I do. Great. All right, so we have it on record. Uh, can you just state your name and the property that you're here to talk about, as well as what assessment you're looking to get? Um, can I ask who I'm talking to, uh, name-wise? Sure. My name is Kevin Kane. I'm one of the three board members uh, as part of the Board of Assessment Review. Okay. Kane is with a K or a C? With a K. Okay. Okay, and you're the only one I'll be talking to then. Nope. Uh, also, no, there's three, there's Steven, three of us here. Stephen Ferrara, F-E-R-R-A-R-A. And Craig okay. Sh Shubmel, S C H U B M E H L. S C H U B M E H L. Okay. All right. Now, what do you need from me? Uh, if we could just kind of, again, state your name, the address, and the uh, assessment that you're looking to obtain. Okay. Karen Donahue, 12 Talbot Drive, Penfield, 14526. And the property assessment. 
All right, so the, uh, if I have my records correct, the, the current assessment that the town has you at is 167,500? And you're That's correct. You're looking to have that reduced to 133,000. Well, that's what I was looking to until I um, talked to the neighbor on my backside in the same quadrant condo um, who got theirs reduced to 118, and they have even more upgrades inside than I do. It's exactly the same building. They're on my on my um, you know on my wall. <laughs> Is it a two-story unit? It's exactly the same as mine. It's on my wall. We're okay. four, four quadrant condos. Yep. And and they're on my um, you know, my living room, my kitchen, my upstairs walls. They're they're my backside of the of the four quadrants. Okay. And that's number fourteen. If you needed to know that. Okay. So I'm thinking one thirty three was a little too high for me to even have estimated if they're down to one eighteen after talking with you. Because they've got more upgrades than I do. They've got, you know, they've got um, wood floors and gas fireplace and basement bathroom and more than I do. So I should, certainly shouldn't be assessed more than they are. Mm hmm. Can you give us any comps? Any right, there any I just talked to him this weekend uh, before, you know, I didn't realize that when I sent in my documents. Okay, well, we got to sure. compare to comparable sales in your neighborhood, so do you have a list? Well, yeah, but so did they. <laughs> I'm telling you, they're exactly the same as I am. Okay. We have number 14 as a, as a sale. I can tell you the owners, if that helps. Well, it looks like you included some pictures of what I think is your property and then also another property. Can you talk to us a little bit about the pictures that you sent in? Yeah, I, I did um, iPhone pictures of comparable rooms in my property to the Zillow. You know what Zillow is, right? Yep. Yes. Okay, to the Zillow rooms of the property that was sold for 170 that's down the hill from me, just showing that mine certainly didn't compare to theirs. Um, and I numbered the ones so you know which ones are mine and which ones are theirs in comp the comparable rooms. And that would be number four, Rockhurst? The, the that's pictures? correct. Yes. Okay. Huh? Yep. Obviously, you can see there's a difference between the two. Correct. So mine certainly shouldn't have been as high as it is. <clears throat> And it should even be lower than I asked for based on what behind people right on my backside got because they're we're condos, you know. We've got exactly the same amount of property size-wise and all that sort of stuff. Was number 14 a sale or is that what the assessment went to? That's what the assessment went to. Okay. I, after you guys looked at it. Recently. We, we don't so look now. Them. We don't look. We're, so they, they, had come, they had come to the town and and had a discussion with the assessor? I thought it was a phone call just like this is. Okay. Hmm. All right. All right. Well, any, any questions? Any other information you have for us? They, like what? Number 14 to what? No, just if there's anything else. Otherwise, we're all set. We'll look everything over, and then we'll get back to you within a few weeks. What kind of other information do you want? Well, the key stuff is sales information. If you have any other sales to show us to, to show what you believe the value is. Okay, so I would not be comparable to the place right behind me that's got even more indoor, indoor upgrades yeah, than that, I do? You talk about the place that got assessed for a lower value, correct? Only right. after they talk to you. Right. We First of all, they didn't talk don't, to us. don't say us. We don't work for the town. We're just here a couple days a year on a volunteer service as a third party. So we know nothing what the town does. So that's why we can't comment on other assessed properties in your neighborhood. We just need to look at comparable sales to compare to your property to try and come up with a value. Okay. I, I think I'm, I'm miscommunicating 
year. Okay. They got assessed higher, just like I did at the same time. We're, right. con- we're condos. We're on each other's backsides. Right. Um, they brought their concerns to the town, just like I did. They right. were called, and it was lowered to 118. So why am I doing something different well, than they're doing when this is what we were asked to do? You're asking us a question we can't answer. We don't work for the town. We're here to listen to your case and to hear what your what your property consists of and then to hear if you have any comparable sales that we can compare to your property to come up with a value. So what your neighbors are assessed for, we don't know. We have no idea. We don't know anything. What it was reduced to or anything. You don't know that. No, you didn't no, because do we don't work for the town, so we don't know that at all. No, no. Um, we don't know if people are under-assessed or over-assessed. We right. just try to individual cases and determine whether the value is there or not. Yep. We do the best we can. Well, it's hard for a homeowner to find out what things sold for. I mean, I only knew about Zillow because I worked for Nasnagel when they were in Fairport. Mm-hmm. I, right. Other people don't even know how to look up things. And what I found was what my bank had found when I got a home equity loan. That's the Vero value sheet that I sent you. Yep, um, that's it. That's because, you know, that's what ESL did when they gave me a home equity loan. And so I figured since you assessed me for, excuse me, the town, assessed me for the same amount as they did here on this Vero value, that that must be what they used to determine my assessment based on what other places had sold for in the vicinity in the last couple of years. So I don't know where my neighbor behind me found sales in our townhomes here in our condo development at Beacon Hills that were so much lower that theirs went down to 118. Right. Yeah, we wouldn't. I don't know where to look. No, either. Okay. Now, you say. How, how do homeowners know where to look for things like that? ESL did the Vero value. value? I don't I don't quite understand. The Vero value says 147 to 187. I don't. Bureau value came up with 167, I believe. They did. Okay. I, For me. Right. I, I'm not which is, which is exactly what the town came up with. So I'm assuming that's what the town used to assess my property. No, no, value. no I mean, the town does not use no, bureau value. We don't work for the town, but I guarantee you they don't do it that way. No. And it wasn't exact. I, I, the town does not use, I've never heard of bureau value, so I don't know. <laughs> right. Well, it was exactly 167, which is what Vero value did. Okay. 147 to 187, and 167 was the Vero value, which is exactly the same amount as the assessed value by the town. Mm, I so have you no can idea. see why I would think that I, way. Sure. We, we oh, yeah. do our own analysis. Yeah. Yep. We try to be fair. So what, <clears throat> so what are you going to recommend? That's up to us to figure out. Right. We've we got to discuss it and... Come up with something, and then uh, we let the town know, and they'll send you out a notice within a few weeks. And if you don't agree, weeks. you can I wonder why my neighbor already knows. <laughs> you know, I don't, I'm very confused about this. Well, I, I'm guessing they went in earlier and, and and worked out an informal agreement. The informal hearings. But, right. They, thank you. They have informal oh. hearings ahead of time. So she, must, she or okay. he must have got it at that time. Okay, they must have known about it before I did. Right. So what is my recourse if this is not going to be brought down to that amount? It's too late to go in and get this informal hearing from them? Yes. <laughs> if yes. this doesn't yes. work out, you... And you have to go to small claims you, court. You get small claims or court. Or talk yeah. to the assessor next year. Yep. Well, that's wild. <laughs> Don't you think? Hey, we all live here, too. That's right. <laughs> We're all residents. We all live in you. Penfield too. Yes. We do. That, yes. we, it's the only way we can be on the board. We have to live in Penfield. Yep, that's correct. Okay. Then wouldn't you think it was a little unfair if the condo that you're bordered with in the same quad in the same building would be assessed that much lower than you, even though they've even made improvements inside that I haven't been able to afford? Yep. Wouldn't that like strike you strangely? We can't answer that, but we do have photographs and we'll yep. try to deal with it accordingly. 
Yep. Okay. Are you going to make note of the fact that the property behind me is brought down to 118 then? We, we can check that addition. out. We can check that out. Yep. Yes. Yep. We'll look okay. into it. As far as additional information, that's my additional information. Okay. Otherwise, I, I You did a wonderful job. No, you, you, you did great here. Nice photographs and everything. Thank you so much. Well, that's probably from the old real estate office. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'm, I miss Nosnagel. They were great. Yep, yep. <laughs> they were. All right. Well, thanks so much. The town will send you something out in a few weeks. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Good afternoon. Hi, Kevin. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing today? I'm good, sir. Thank you for asking. Yeah, welcome to the board. So uh, before we get started, I just need to swear you in. So uh, do you swear that the information you're about to give is, to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? 100% yes. Great. So that we have it on record, um, can you just uh, state your name, the property that you're here to talk about, and what uh, the assessment you're looking for? Joseph A. Vitello at 76 Watersong Trail in Webster, New York, 14580. All right. And you're looking for um, a reduction in your assessment. It looks like, if our, my records are correct, the town has reassessed you at 507800 and you're looking to have that reduced to 420000 I wanted to talk about that. So okay. um, we we bought the property in the fall of 2018 for 420,000. And I know the market's gone up a little bit since then, so I'm not looking for 420, but I don't it's definitely not 507. So that's why I wanted to talk and have this conversation today. So when we bought the house in 420 in Watersong, I mean, you guys know where Watersong is, obviously. Some of the houses in here are very expensive. I totally understand that. However, my house is one of the smaller houses in Watersong, and we beat out multiple offers for the for the price at 420 because that's what the house was worth in a seller's market then. You guys know that it's been a strong market for several years now up here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so we bought in the fall of 2018, so it was just a few years ago, and um, the market was obviously very very strong then. So to beat out multiple offers in Watersong at 420, that's what the house is worth. Um, there's no way that the house is worth 507. You know, some houses in here, I understand, might be worth that. This house is not worth that. Now, you do have a home or am a home, is that correct? Uh, it was a 2010 home or am a home. Okay, okay. So, yes, yeah, so it was all from a long time ago, a home or am a right. house. I believe you, you, you're back so, to the green space area. Are you at the far end of the subdivision? Yes, that's okay. exactly right. Okay. Yeah, so we're, we have an older home here. And we haven't done anything to the house since we moved in. Um, I think we changed the fireplace, and that was it. So, you know, we haven't done much to the house. Okay. Um, when I say fireplace, I mean just stone around it. Not like we didn't replace the fireplace, just simply the stone around it. Um, so, you know, the house, the market was 420 just a few years ago. I understand there's a little bit of increase since then. I totally get that. So I think realistically the house is worth like 440 not 507. Um, so you don't so think it's gone up much? Up. I mean, because the general market since 2018 has gone up a heck of a lot. Um, so you don't think yours has appreciated in four years? There's no there's no way that it's gone up that much, over $20,000 in only a few years. I, I, there's no doubt okay. in my mind it's gone up that much. Okay. So again, recognize that I have a smaller house in Watersong. Uh, we don't, you know, we don't have a living room or a, uh, a dining room. We don't have a living room. We just have the standard family room, and that's it. It's on the smaller end, and, you know, we don't have a pool. Um, we haven't made any, you know, modifications to the house since we purchased it. How about finished um, basement? I, I see it's a walkout. Is it finished? Uh, it's partially finished, only partial. So what, what would be included down there? I'm not sure your question. No, oh, is there a family room, rec room, bath, bedroom? There's no bedroom. It's just a partially furnished room. It's like a play area for the kids. Okay. Okay. Thanks. 
Yeah, and that's, and that's no modification since we bought the house once again. Okay. So, um, so all I'm looking for is for fair market value for the house. Um, I think 440 is the correct um, amount. I did increase comps, which are in the very vicinity of my house that are very similar size and uh, bedrooms and bathrooms. I think that gives you a pretty good idea as well. Um, but there's there's no way that 507 is correct value for my house based on me purchasing it for 420 just a few years ago with competing offers. Very good. So I, I see you do have some uh, sales that you put in the, the package of information. Yep, we included some comps. That's correct. Yep. Okay. All right. And that's more in line with the value of my house based on the condition and the size and the bedrooms and all that. All right. Well, we'll go over everything and uh, get our opinion back to the town, and then we'll get back to you within a few weeks. Okay. When, uh, when should I expect to hear from you? With, within a, the, you'll get a letter in a few, within a few weeks. We don't know, have an exact date, but somewhere in a few weeks. So like by like the 10th of June, I should know something. Is that fair? The 10th of June? No. no I'd, say, <laughs> I'd say three to five. Yeah. It'd probably be end of June at the earliest. End of June. Okay. Yep. Well, that's why I'm yep. asking. I just wanted to yep. have an idea. Okay. By end of June. Okay. Yep. Very good. Thanks so much. Anything else? No, I think that'll do it. All right. I appreciate uh, your, your help today and appreciate your time. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank thanks. You. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye, sir. Bye. From your deck. Good afternoon. Hello. Hi. How are you today? Good, thanks. How are you? Good. Welcome to the Board of Assessment Review. So, I'm Cheryl Pratt, and I'm representing Lawrence and Patricia Jan Greco, who reside at 1714 Jackson Road in Penfield. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So uh, before we get started, though, let me just quickly swear you in. So uh, okay. do you swear that the information that you're about to give is, to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? Yes. Great. Okay, so uh, you already stated your, your name and the property that you're representing. Um, yes. So, based on our records, I, I'm showing that the town has reassessed the property at 216,100, and you're looking yes. for a reduction in that assessment to 175,000. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Can you uh, give us some information as to how you support the $175,000 market value? Okay. So, first, did you look over the attachment that I said, sent in with? the um, with the grievance the uh, information that that I have in front of me shows a uh, basically a change in assessed value yes is that mm -hmm. is that what you're referring to yes okay I listed the change in the assessed value and how you went about um, increasing the value um, going from starting in 2000 up to 2022. And um, I noticed a trend in how you did your reassessments, and it was usually based on when the home sold. Mm -hmm. Yep, usually the, okay. the market value is based on uh, comparable sales at the time of the assessment. But usually, and it usually happens after the home is sold. Well, that's that's one indication indication of value. Yes. Okay. All right. So now you are have chosen as a board to assess the entire town of Penfield. We did. Well, let me let me just clarify that it wasn't the board that decided. It was the town and the town assessor did the reassessment of the of the town. So that we are we are just a, a independent board that is meets uh, once a year to, to deal with situations like this, uh, but we are just all okay. residents of Penfield. We don't work for the town. You are residents of Penfield, okay. And so your home was also reassessed. Yep. That is correct. Oh yeah, up 30%. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel about them doing this at a time when the, the market is, is crazy? with outrageous prices how do you personally feel about it me i think i'm still low you think it's low i think i think i'm fine 
Values are high. Yeah. They've gone up. They skyrocketed. I'm, I'm happy. Right. You're you're basing you're basing in in the past. Any time a home has been reassessed, it's happened when a home has sold. No, no, a, that's a not a home in particular. No, it's when the state tells the town to do it. They have to do it at certain points. They don't just they don't reassess uh, upon a sale every time. Well, that hit that happened. I live in Penfield as well, and it happened on our home when we bought it. And I went back through the history of how the town reassessed, and the same thing here with this property. When this property was bought, within the next two years, it was reassessed. Going back through the records, that is how the town has done it. I can't answer that. I, I haven't experienced that myself, but I can't answer that. Well, looking at, looking at, I looked at my home, this home, my brother's home, and it, it, it's the exact same scenario. And I wish I had for you then in front of you the exact same, I'm, I'm telling you the honest to goodness truth. Well, I've lived here 45 years and I've been reassessed, but I've never seen it based upon a sale. Based, based upon a sale, yeah, and I, I picked out three homes, three homes that I'm familiar with, and that's how the and that's how it's been done in the past. Now this is a a, a Penfield wide the entire population, which at this time in in history, with the way that the the market is, you are reassessing homes based on sales of neighboring homes which is not fair because yes, the market is inflated. I've come before the board in the past and I have at that time been able to, to have my home reassessed um, or yeah, I've, I've been able to come before the board as a person, as a grievance to show that the market value of the homes in the area around me were were lower. I can't do that now because all homes are inflated right now. You have to agree that all homes are inflated now. Do you not agree with that? Possibly, but I possibly so. maybe we're, we've also caught up to the national market because Rochester's always been a little low. So I, it, it's not the national. Okay. Well, I mean, our, you know, it's not the national. I mean, yes, right now, but we're also in a bubble. I would right agree. Now but we're in a bubble. But these values are based and upon then, July of 2021, so we're going toward the early part of the bubble. The early part of the bubble, right? And this this bubble's going to pop. So you're reassessing these homes at in a bubble that's going to pop. I'm the not mortgage doing rates that. Are be, the mortgage rates are beginning to surge. Right. Now, so in your in, driving. I, I apologize because we don't, you know, we're on a tight schedule here. Do you have any comparable sales that you'd like to talk about to compare to the? Well, that's what I'm saying. I cannot. I, I how can I do comparable well, I, sales well, right now? All we during do, this bubble. Right, all we can do is a board. You know, again, we don't work for the town. We're here once a year is we see what your assessment is, and then you you need to, the burden of proof is on you to provide us comparable sales to show us that the assessment is incorrect, and that's all we can do. And you could go back two years for sales, pre-bubble, early bubble. Right. And, and again, <laughs> this bubble is going to pop, okay. and you are reassessing homes at a far outrageous price compared to what they're going to drop down to. Well, theoretically, if it pops, you hope that the town then, the towns all make adjustments for that. They'll, but, make, they'll drop it. <laughs> right. It should, it should values, assessments should drop then if that happens. <laughs> And, all, and not to mention, I mean, look at the state that we are in right now with inflation, with gas prices, that you're attacking the entire population of Penfield. Well, we're not doing anything. Please don't, <laughs> please don't say us. We're just the board, remember? <laughs> say the town, not okay, us. Well, blame your, <laughs> blame your right, politicians. And, and, 
So as the board then, you're looking out for, you know, your fellow neighbors, how can you, with a good, in good conscience, allow this to happen? Because so our, you, our so based on what, based on what you're going to tell me today, is what the final say is going to be. Our ethical job, as I told you, is to hear you out, which we're happy to do, and then we look for comparable sales to compare against your assessment and see if it's fair or not. That's what we are required to do. And how can you get a comparable sale at this time, at this stage of the game? All we can we do take sales from 2020, two years ago, right. three years ago. We so two, so then, so I can come back then. I can look that up then from that. two years ago. Well, you, that was never. Uh, you, that's unfair then, because to get a comparable sale according to the directions you're looking now. So let me go back two years then. At comparable sales. The date of valuation is July of last year. It's not today. Okay, well then let me go back then. I, I, I would like to put before this board then another chance then. I, I don't know how that works. You'd have to check with the town. I don't know how that works. Mm -hmm. so. Well, what can you do to help me today then? Because I, and I put in my own assessment then incorrectly too. Okay, all we can do is gather and hear your information that you've got and go from there. And and then again I'm gonna ask you how in good conscience can you how can you not take into account what's happening in the world today? <laughs> because with inflation, gas prices going through the roof with the mortgage rates that are starting to surge, which is going to drive the borrowing cost up for homeowners. So, so this, this bubble is going to pop. And what, all right, now just quick scenario. What if it doesn't and we say you're right and we're not gonna raise anybody and everybody could stay low and then the bubble doesn't pop for five years? Well, well I mean, well, that's possible, it, right? Is that possible? Based but based on how Penfield has done this in the past, they will come back and reassess when the home is sold. So why are you attacking the entire population of Penfield when you should be going along as you've been doing? I mean, you're going to be getting incredible revenue from the reassessments that you're doing on those homes that have sold within the past two years. I, I, to, I don't work for the town to, but, again, so I, I can't answer any but, town questions. So, But to take into account, I mean, how do you personally, if you are a Penfield resident, how, resident, how do you personally feel with what they have done? They're, they're doing a reassessment. If the values are on the line, then I'm happy with it. They, they haven't There's done Some a people are going to get hurt. Years. Some people are going to get good deals. <clears throat> Yep. I can't your, understand to everybody to talking at once. Okay. You gotta talk <laughs> to your politician. <laughs> so we, we don't we don't make the rules. Is there anything else you got for us? If not, we'll uh, go over what we got and the town will get back to you in several weeks. In several weeks. We don't have an Is exact time said? we don't have exact time period because we have and we have to listen to hundreds and hundreds of cases coming in and that, that could take well, a couple what, weeks. What what can you do for me today with what I have shown you and what I have told you that right. I have found from my experience on how the board does do this? What can we as a board do for you today? Yes. Nothing. Nothing. I've been on the board for Nothing. 35 years. I mean... I think we've been very fair to people over the years. Yeah, there's nothing we can do. All we, that's a, all we can bad. do today is listen to you and then go on from there. That's all we can do today. And there's nothing you could do. I know that I've come before the board. This is another thing, too. I'm upset that it's a phone call. I've come before the board. We and agree with given you. Me we, we would love to see you face to face. That's how we've done it for over 30 years. So we're upset about that, yeah. too. I'm with you all the way on that one. So this is completely unfair. You have to talk to and your you politicians. Have to agree. <laughs> and I've, I know that 
in the past, they've been able to tell me what the amount would be. I don't uh, think so. Not, no, no, not in Penfield. I don't think so. We've been doing this over 30 years, and that is not the case. That does not happen on Grievance Day. So you are incorrect on that. Well, I mean, I okay. think it, at this point, I think it's, we're going to take everything under advisement, and then, as we said, we'll get back to the town, and the town will get back to you. Um, but at this point, that's about all we can be able to offer you today. And then what is it that you're offering me? Nothing. No, that we're going we to look at the package of information that you've provided us, and we'll make our decision. And then based on that, we'll let the town know, and then the town will get back to you. All right. Well, I would also then also put in here, too, that you advise me to look back two years at home sales. I said you can go back. The date evaluation for us is July 1st of 2021. So you don't have and to take you, also, you don't have to take you also, you also said, you also told me to go back two years. I comps. didn't say to go back two years, but you can use comps that relate to July 1st of 2021. Someone told me to go back two years. I said so you, I can. Go, you, you can. can. The, the, you can. You can. You have to. Okay. You can. All right. So I was advised to go back two years to look for comps. So I would like that put in there as well, and then I will provide you with that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right, and thanks. then who should I who should I give that? Who who am I speaking with? The town assessor. So you, would, can, you would go back through the town assessor. Okay, and then you will include that with this grievance. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure that, exactly I'll how that it works. It doesn't have to be put in. I'll bring it tomorrow so you can put it in with the same per paperwork so you That's can look fine. at it okay. tomorrow. Very well. And Very well. Okay. If you can put that in your notes, I would greatly appreciate that. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. All right, All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Hi, how are you today? Wonderful, how are you? Doing great. Well, welcome to the Board of Assessment Review for Penfield. Before we get okay. started, let me just quickly swear you in. So do you swear yes. that the information that you're about to give is, to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? I do. Great. So just so we have it on the record, um, can you state your name, your uh, the property that you are here to talk about today, and what assessment you're you're looking to get? Okay, that's Alan Niels at 1761 Plank Road, Webster, New York. In regards to a two-story 1900 uh, built home, 2,800 square foot, and I'm looking for assessment. To, my value is around 250 thousand. Okay, I, I have sorry. a different yeah. number, different house number. Oh, do you, I have two houses. Is, this appointment is for uh, uh, 1943, maybe? Yes, it is. 1743. 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, yes. Yep. Oh, we have another appointment at 3 o'clock, so let me switch my papers here. and. You can probably knock them both. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, can we just deal with them both at the same time? It's actually the house next door. We're talking 1943. Uh, let's open up this paperwork. This is a Sears and Roebuck house that was a free prefab house. Oh, I talk in like a thousand square foot. And my assessment value is 150,000. That you're seeking that. That's that's what you're looking for, right? That's that's what I it's just yes. Yeah. So the uh, the town assessed you at one hundred and eighty two thousand nine hundred. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. All right. So then, um, I guess why don't you give us a little bit of background on how you got to the conclusion that one hundred and fifty thousand was the considered the market value of your home? Yes, I did send in a couple emails, and I looked up and researched some addresses. Yep. And I have those. I have those addresses here. All right, yeah, if you just want to talk to us real quickly, you know, kind of top level about what, uh, you know, what the differences are between those houses and, and how, you, uh, how you came to that conclusion. OK, 
Okay, yes. There's a house on Atlantic Avenue, 3825 Atlantic Avenue, sold in uh, December of uh, 2020 for $100,000, and it's 1,039 square foot with three acres. And they sold that for $100,000 in 2020. Another house on Atlantic Avenue at 2907, sold at 61019 for 120000 That's another house that's 1,068 square foot with two acres. So those two are the direct land proportion to the house that I have, and the sales represent uh, quite a bit lower than what I've been assessed for. Mm -hmm. okay. There's another, another property that's on uh, Hatch Road, 1162 Hatch Road, it sold in uh, July of 2020 for 135,000, 1,056 uh, 56 square foot. That has an acre of property. So all these uh, comparisons are all like way below the assessment that I've been 182.90, and those comparisons that I've sent in as some sort of research shows a 30 to 40 thousand dollar difference from what they were sold for to what I'm being assessed as. So like I said, it's a two bedroom, one bath house uh, with a garage. And I just had the place reassessed in 2016 when I added a garage on and I raised my assessment at 38,000 in 2016. So I purchased it for 100,000, put a little bit of work into it and it was assessed for $38,000 more. Yeah, could, you, could you let, let us know about the, the inside condition a little bit, kitchen, baths, and all that, carpets, paint? How's the inside condition? Well, the inside, I put uh, like a, an engineered flooring that's in the living room, kitchen, they're together. It has an upstairs laundry room, and it just has two small 10 by 11 bedrooms with a central bathroom. So there's really, and there's no front porch, there's no back porch, there's just one garage that's attached to the house. How's the kitchen? Older? Modern? Kitchen's, kitchen's an older kitchen, correct. Okay. The bathroom's been updated in 2016. The basement is a is a wet basement for this area. Again, we have a sump pump that's pretty active because of the water table in this area. The, 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 the town's working on the ditching, but it still hasn't been completed. So it's got, it's got siding, it's got a metal roof. Those are the upgrades in 2016. Mm-hmm. It's a thousand square feet, is that just the, is that both levels or just the first level? It's a one story. It's just a, it's just a ranch. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you said laundry was upstairs. I, I misheard you. It was the other address. Oh. No, it was in a basement, I moved it upstairs. Oh, when you said uh, <laughs> oh. upstairs, you meant the first level. I thought you meant second level. Gotcha, gotcha. It's a, Correct. But this has um, has tar paper and horse hair for insulation when I started working on it. And there's six inch prefab walls that I've, I've since insulated the place. But the place, like I said, was a Sears and Roebuck prefab house. Okay. Anything else you got for us? Is that it? No, just 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 a small little house that I'm just trying to keep the yep. value so I can keep it in the family. So. No, you gave us a lot of good information. We appreciate that. We'll go over everything, and then the town will get back to you in uh, several can we, weeks. Can yeah. we get the other one? Well, I think what we, are we looking oh, for for my one? next two? And I'm sorry, I guess we yeah we got time. We're gonna do the other one. Is that okay? Yeah, the one scheduled for three o'clock. Yes, yeah, sure. Right, if you, right, if you got you on the phone. It, yep. Yeah, well, now that I got your format a little bit, I can probably yeah. make that happen. That's okay. a big road. Yeah, yeah it's right next door at 1761. Okay. That's the set for 307-660. Yep. And that is uh, built in 1890. It's an old two-story farmhouse. It was an old tenant house. And I've since improved on it, but it's a very large room for only like two bedrooms and a bath. Well, and we got the stone wall basement that's five foot, 
than a crawl space under the old porch. So the place has two sump pumps. Uh, there are some hardwood floors that are pre-finished that I installed in the downstairs. And the upstairs has carpet. But the one bathroom is as modern as it can be, raising three kids here, and it was redone quite a few years ago. So I'm sure it might be on the list in the future. Got two little open porches, and it's got a lot of land, but the only trouble is it's not usable land. I did send a bunch of pictures over, and 75% of it's underwater. How much uh, land is there? Oh, well, 26 I acres? I believe 26, 26 acres, acres yes. yeah. Yep. But unfortunately, it's, uh, it's on the wetlands roll, too. Portion of this property, I can't even farm it because you can't, for one is the wetlands, and I guess it's a registered DEC wetlands, you can't use it for destruction. So it's got a stone wall foundation that leaks, which is, uh, uh, I guess the mortar starting to powder out a little bit from the old days. Mm -hmm. Some of the floor joints are the old timbers, and they get, had termites in them, so they, they're a little bit decayed. And there's, I'm on septic system also. I have no sewers on either one of these two places. Uh, I did paint the barn back in 2020, but it's not attached. So we do have a lot of large rooms, but they're not, I mean, like some of the places I've had comparisons, they're five bedrooms, two and a half baths, and I have those for you too. I guess I am working with town engineers right now to get a DEC permit to try to open up some of the ditches in the area. I guess it takes a couple of years to do. So they're going to try to get that on that uh, cleaning list. So at least I'm getting some progress there. Uh, some of the comparisons I have for a house that was sold in November 2021 was a five bedroom, two and a half baths, two kitchens, 3,200 square foot. It sold for 290. That address is uh, 2149 Five Mile Line Road. It was assessed for 185, and it sold for 290 and 21. Another one I have is sold in December 21 for 210,000. It's a 26 square foot house, 2600 square foot. Both of these are on sewers. Four bedrooms, two and a half baths. So the, what I'm looking at, some of these have a lot more than what I have, and the prices are a little bit less. I'm sure they're getting reassessed also, but this is the data that I have. Another is a three-bedroom, one-bath house on 1780 Penfield Road. It sold in December 2021 for $220,000. That's on sewers also. But another house I have is 2040 Penfield Road. It sold in uh, September 2020 for 240. The four bedroom, one and a half baths, with 2,800 square foot. And all these comparisons have sewers. And I'm, I know they can't have sewers everywhere, but it is kind of nice to have. But. Mm. Let's see, the rest of the house, the house is sided. It has a 30-year-old roof on it, asphalt shingles, vinyl siding, two open porches. And again, I'm not sure if the, the assessment is probably is because of the land or is it because of the square footage of the house. I'm not sure, but it's a big old farmhouse with a lot of big rooms, but all it does is affect the heating bill. So. <laughs> and I put a replaced uh, the windows probably I think I got 75% of the windows replaced. So I'm working on that to get that at a point where I can at least feel good about uh, paying the bills. It has an 80% furnace. It doesn't have the fancy 100% efficiency furnace. So I guess it's, well, the only thing I had is a small air conditioner tied into the unit. So I did upgrade with air conditioning. Most of our activities, the two bedrooms are upstairs, the bathroom's downstairs. So we have a large family room, a large dining room, a sewing room. So all those things they had back in the olden days is what a lot of space, but the function's not there. And 
And then the basement, like I said, we have two active sump pumps that if we lose our electricity, we're in trouble. We've flooded out several years in a row, so I put a generator in someday, but but what else would help you guys? No, that's this you've, is you've done an excellent job. Great information. We'll uh just like with the other yeah, I one. Did, I did give you some pictures though. Did you guys get a chance to see those? Yep. We have yep, we have them. We have them. Okay, so I did I did kind of consolidate some of that for you. Yep. But I appreciate you guys uh, spending the time to do this. Oh, no yep, problem. No problem. The town will get something out to you within a, within a few weeks. Hey, guys. Great job. Thanks for your help. Thank right. you very much. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thanks bye for bye coming. Bye. Yep. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good, thank you. So before we get started, um, I just want to go ahead and swear you in. So uh, do you swear that the information that you're about to give us is, to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? Yes, I do. Great. So for the record, can you just state your name and the property that you are here to discuss? Uh, my name is Alexandra. Property address is 86 Creek Hill Lane, Rochester, New York, 14625. Okay. And based on the uh, documentation that I have, the town has assessed you at 167500 and you're looking for... That's correct. And you're looking for that to be reduced to 150000 That's correct. Okay. So I know you sent us a lot of information in the packet, so that's great. We appreciate that. So um, hoping that you could maybe tell us a little bit about the house and uh, talk about, uh, you know, kind of how you looked at the comparable sales to com come to a conclusion of 150000 as the market value. Okay. So uh, we purchased this house back in 2020, just to say 21. And... Um, uh, house has, um, when we purchased, we were told it's a new roof. So all of a sudden, the roof is started uh, leaking. So pretty soon, we have to put a new roof. So uh, nothing's updated in the house. Everything's original. Uh, kitchen is original. Linoleum, linoleum floor uh, in the kitchen. Uh, all their windows, all their siding. Uh, driveway needs to be uh, re repaired or replaced pretty soon. Um, one full bathroom is not updated. It's all original. So this house was owned previously uh, for a long time with the original owner. And uh, when we bought it, we didn't bought it from original owner. We bought it from a new owner who's been there only for a year or two. But uh, even new owner hasn't done any upgrades. There is a sliding door, but it's an uh, older sliding door. So based on uh, other comps, what's on the market, uh, the house needs updating. So I believe value is 150000 It's a fair value up for the house. Okay. So you purchased it in 2021? Correct. Yeah. All right. And it Am I correct that the price that you paid was one hundred fifty-nine thousand nine hundred? Uh, that's correct, and uh, the reason why we paid asking price because, as you know, uh, market started after COVID started uh, very aggressive and competitive market. So uh, we had no choice uh, because if you want to buy a house, you have to either pay more or asking price. So that's the reason we pay that price. But um, if you look into the condition of the house, that house is, is really it's not worth it once what we paid for. But we just paid for it because shortage of inventories and we were competing with the other offers. Okay, so the, the house was listed on the market and there were other competing offers that you had to beat? Correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Because so do do you believe do, don't you believe that's market value though? <laughs> just just while you're um, 
I'm 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 by myself. Myself, I am a real estate agent. Right, and that, and that's why I'm asking. I've been in the I've, yep. <laughs> I've been in the business for 20 years. I have never seen market very competitive market. Even this year, it's even worse. Right. And the only way people paying uh, asking or over asking price because of the shortness of inventories. But okay. if you are if you are going back two, three, five, and more years, this house I don't even know if this house is gonna be probably between one one twenty one thirty in this condition. But because of competing a, com, a very competitive a market and competing offers, that's why prices on a high is sky high because. We have no inventory in the market. Right. We have a one house, and we have a 23 uh, offers. We have a 60 uh, 60 showings in a one week, and only one buyer is a winner, and that buyer is paying more money because they need right. a roof over the top. Oh, they yeah. have oh, to yeah. put his family somewhere, and that's why the price is, is sky high. Yep, I, I understand all that, but now it's been that way for two, maybe going on three years. Would you agree? Uh, I agree, and now it's even getting worse. I agree with that, <laughs> but just just think about if if market's gonna go back, what are we gonna do with this right. all high assessed value? If price is gonna go uh, but, like foreclosures and falling down, right, then people we still have to pay high taxes, but value is not what we pay for. We unfortunately can't read the future. I mean, it's still like that right now, and maybe it'll be like this for another year or two. Correct. Well, that's correct, but we, you, we, can, we can go by this market. In New York <laughs> State law, we have to go look at the but, back two years, what the market was. We the, can't really price house based on the market what's going on now. It's, if, everything's going up. But if the town is doing a reassessment and they have to do their values as of July 1st last year, we don't really have any choice but to, lose, but to use this current data. Would you agree? Uh, physically, you, you don't see every house. If that, if how, if my house has a new windows, updated kitchen, new flooring, has a new roof, new siding, I agree with you because we invest more money. I agree, my value on the house is much more. But if you if you uh, take to consideration houses has been not updated. With, with what was updated, I'm not agree on that, too. Okay. Because, okay. because if I listed the house, I can list the same house, no uh, improvement, what the house has been done, improvements to the house, like 30, 40 more grants. I can, I can list the house on the same level because consideration, we have to take uh, improvements, what's been done to the house. Okay. All right. Well... Actually, you've given us a lot of information. The process now is we'll go through and review everything and make our assessment, and then we will get back to the town, and the town will get back to you, um, you know, sometime during June. June? Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks. Thanks for your call. Have a great day, too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good afternoon. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the Board of Assessment Review. So Hi. before we get started, I'd just like to swear you in. So do you swear that the information you're about to give is, to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? Yes. Great. So that we have it on record, can you just state your name and the property address you're here to talk about, as well as what uh, the assessment you're looking for is? Yeah. So my name is Christina Roberti. And I currently have a home at 2084 Penfield Road. And yeah, I just wanted to talk about uh, the, the recent assessment that's been uh, placed on the house. And hopefully we could uh, maybe get a, a better, more reasonable assessment on that. Okay, just uh, so that we're all on the same page, the information that I have is that the mm -hmm. current assessment, um, I think there was some discussion you might have had with the assessor recently. So the, mm -hmm. we have the assessment at 122000 
And yes. according to your application, you're looking for a, an assessment of 105. Is that accurate? Yeah, I mean, definitely something obviously lower than the 122, but I did have it starting at the 105. That's what it, it was previously. Okay. Uh, can you let us know when you purchased the property? Uh, I purchased it back in 2019. Okay. And for how much? Uh, it was up for 115. 115. Okay. So yeah. if you're asking for 105, you think the value of the property has declined since you purchased it? Well, I mean, I don't know that it's necessarily declined. Obviously, I know, um, you know, right properties have gone up recently. Um, but I do feel like, you know, one between 105 and 115 is probably a more reasonable assessment than the, uh, you know, the current 122 that I was given. Okay. So do you have any other sales of properties or anything that you can point to to kind of give an indication of what you think the value would be? Right. So I did, I did send you guys over, um, you know, three different um, properties. One is 2457 Brown Cross Bullet. Boulevard. Um, that currently has, um, you know, the same bedrooms, same baths. Actually, has one and a half bath, so one more than the one that I currently have. Um, it was built right on the same time as mine. It's a ranch. Um, it just sold in 2022 for 102, and it's currently assessed at 112. Okay. What was the? So I'm sorry. Can I ask you what that address again was? Yep, it's 2457 Brown Cross Boulevard. All right. And you say that that property is very comparable to yours? Oh, yeah, if not, um, I would say nicer than mine because it does have an extra half bath than mine does. And it actually has an extra 200 square feet than mine currently does. And that's at 112. So for how much? That currently. 120. Uh, I think 102, I think. 102. Right, the sale price was 102, yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything, any other comparable sales pieces of data? Yeah, the other, the other one that I would um, suggest looking at is the 3825 Atlantic Avenue. And that sold in um, 2020 for $100,000. And, um, you know, that, too, is the same bedrooms and bath as mine. And, um, yeah, so that's all that $100,000. Okay. Does anybody have any no. questions or? No questions. Nope. No? All right. So we will take a look at those couple of properties and the information yeah. that we have here, and we will make our judgment, get back to the town, and then the town will get back to you um, sometime during June. Okay, sounds good. I appreciate you guys, uh, you know, taking the time out of your day to take a look at this for me. Great. No, okay. thank you for calling in. Appreciate it. Yeah, all right. If you need anything else, just, you know, let me know. Give me a call, okay? Okay, sounds good. good. Have a great day. Thanks. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a good day. All right. Bye-bye. Good afternoon. Hi, uh, this is Nancy Keppel. Hi, Nancy. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. And you? I'm doing good, thanks. Great. So, welcome to the Board of Assessment Review. Uh, before we get started, let me just swear you in. So, do you okay. swear that the information you're about to give is, to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? Yes, I do. Great. So, uh, Nancy, if you could just, for the record, uh, tell us the property that you are here to talk about and what you think the assessment should be. Okay. So I'm here to talk about 159 Farm Brook Drive, Rochester 14625, and the, um, the tax map number is 123.11-1-32. Okay, great. So uh, what we're showing uh, in our records is that the town currently has you assessed at 199.9, and you're looking to have that reduced to 175. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So tell us a little bit about the house and and why you know what comps you looked at and why you think the the market value should be 175. Okay. I have um, 
I have five points I'd like to make. The first one is the acreage. Um, I have 0.49 acres. Um, however, the majority of this, it's more than 60% is unusable. Uh, 22 foot from my back of my house, it goes straight down. Um, it's, I'm off of Panorama Trail, so it's a ravine, and it goes straight down, not usable at all. That's the first point I wanted to make. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the second point, uh, may, I, may I go on? Yes, go ahead. Okay. The second point is my house has not been updated. Um, I've lived here since, I believe, 1974. Um, I have the original 1964 Williamson furnace. I do not have air conditioning. I have the original windows, the original bathrooms, um, the original kitchen, the original doors. Um, so that's the second point. Um, the third point is um, August 22nd of 2020, I had Dan Jones of Keller, of Keller Williams out here to um, look at the house and give me a, um, an estimate of what I could sell it for. At that point, he did the comparative market analysis, um, and he gave me a range of 165 to 175,000. Okay, I'm um, sorry. When when did you say you had that done again? August 22nd of 2020. Okay. Um, now I've given you five comparable homes. Um, I tried to do a sort of all of the information that, that was available to me that, that you guys put out there. Um, now, it was hard with the age of my home in 1964, um, the size of it. Um, it. It was hard to find anything exact, but I believe that most of these were comparable. Um, in terms of their ranches, their size, you know, they, they might have been, you know, 100, 200 foot off um, in square footage. Um, age, et cetera. Um, what I found was of those five comparable homes, the average was um, 177.6 thousand uh, was what they had been sold for. Um, the majority of them had been updated. I, I went through and I looked at Zillow on each one of those. Um, so in, in most cases, they told me that they had, um, well, they didn't use the word gutted, but they said, you know, they had redone the kitchen, redone the bathrooms, um, many of them even had um, living space downstairs that, you know, that, that was counted, that, uh, that they were counted, uh, that they were counting. Um, so that's my third point. Okay. Um, my fourth point is um, a house one down from me, it's 143 Farmbrook, has definitely devalued my property and the other neighbors. Um, the family who've been there for six years, they run a commercial business that is snow plowing, yard mowing, and construction. And they keep their large equipment, and I mean bulldozers, I, I, everything. They leave that on their, on their lawn or in the front of the street. Now, the people on the street, um, we've been trying to work with the town of Penfield for six years, and... Um, I mean, there has been so much conversation about, about what these people are doing, but nothing has changed in six years. I think the, the, count, the town of Penfield, they just can't get it done. And You said that's the house next door to you? It's one down from me. It's 143. I'm 159. Okay. But, um, you know, I can see it. I'm looking at it right now. I can see the whole thing from, from my front. Um, it, it's terrible. So there are two code violations there. One is that they, uh, they're they running a, a business from their home, and also that the, the large equipment that they keep are in the yard, in the driveway, on the street. Now, not consistently. They'll do it for four days, and then they'll move it. And then a day or two later, it'll come back. So we've been we've been dealing with this for six weeks. I'm sorry, for six years. So that's my fourth point. Okay. And then my fifth and my last point is, um, as of today, I don't have any exemptions on my home. Um, the home is in my name. It always has been in my name. Um, my husband is a Vietnam veteran. 
or was in combat. Um, I don't know if that makes any difference, but so those are my points. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's, uh, that's all good information to have. Um, does anybody have questions? Or? No. It's, it's too bad you got to go through that because, yeah. boy, you should report oh, it. I mean, the town should be helping you on that. Yeah, that's... Well, I'm not saying that they don't try. He's been yeah. to court, I can't tell you how many times, um, but nothing is ever done. Hmm. All right. Well, we, we probably got everything we need, so uh, okay. we will review everything, get back to the town with a value, and they will get back to you in several weeks. Okay. So uh, I think I, have, I just have one more quick thing. Yeah. Um, sure. I just got, I just came back um and so I took it my mail. I got something from you, and they said my tentative assessment is um, one ninety nine, not one ninety nine nine. So this was a letter, uh, well, it's called twenty twenty two assessment notification. I mean that doesn't make any difference. It's just that this says one ninety nine, and you you quoted one ninety one ninety nine nine. Okay, we can certainly okay. we can take a look at that. Okay. All right, fine. Thank you so much for your time. Great. All right, thank, thank you. you very much. Have a yep. great day. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Thanks. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Hi. Welcome to the Board of Assessment Review. Uh, before we get started, let me just quickly swear you in. So do you swear that the information that you're about to give is to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? Yes. Great. So just for the record, uh, can you please state your name and the property address that you're here to talk about and as well as the uh, assessed value you're looking to get? Yes, my name is Jennifer Fan and my property is 42 Rail Drive Project and New York one four five eight zero. Okay. Uh, so according to the records that I have, just to make sure we're all talking about the same thing, the town has currently assessed your property at one hundred and seventy three thousand five hundred, and you're looking to have that reduced to one hundred and twenty five thousand. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. All right, so um, can you tell us a little bit about the property and how you came about the conclusion that uh, 125000 is the uh, market value of your home? Uh, we saw my house, no, um, I, the roof needs to be... Um, uh, the, my roof is... Still, I mean, I need to replace, but I have, don't have money yet. And uh, a lot of stuff is like not um, in room at all. And uh, outside the tree so long, I don't have money to hold them to cut down either. That's when if the test go up, that's a lot of, I mean, I don't think that's not a good idea for me. Okay. Okay. Yes. Can you tell us any... What about the con inside condition of your house? Inside? I never improve anything at all, just like that. You know what I mean? It's not an improvement. It's still old. I mean, it's nice. That is old. That means it's not improvement anything. I, I really don't have money to do something yet. Okay. All right. Hmm. Any questions? Good. Is that it? Okay. Yeah. We oh. can look. We can look over your information and make a determination. Thank you. And we will. Uh, we will get back to the town, and the town will get back to you, and uh, probably sometime during June. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very Thank much. You. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, how are you today? I'm good, how are you? Doing great, thanks. 
So welcome to the Board of Assessment Review. Before we get started, let me just quickly swear you in. So do you swear okay. that the information that you are about to give is to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? Yeah. Great. So that we have uh, it on record, please uh, just state your name and the property that you're gonna be talking about today and what you are looking for for an assessment. Uh, my name is Charcy Schultz. The address is 1735 Gloria Drive, Fairport, New York, 14450. Um, and I'm looking for an assessment of 193, uh, 125. Okay. And uh, so the town currently has you at 295,200, is that correct? I believe that's correct, yeah. Okay. So can you tell us a little bit about the house and uh, why you think the 193 value is what the market value of the house would be? Sure. So I was instructed when going through this to find comparables. And so I did the Penfield validated list. Um, I believe it was dated March 18, 2022. Mm -hmm. That's modified on May 19th. Um, and I um, looked at style and the year built and the number of bedrooms and baths um, and the square footage and then the sale date and the sale price and then the average, uh, the um, square foot, um, the price per square foot. And then I also looked at acreage because I think that um, we are unique um, with a little bit of acreage. Um, and so I compiled a list of seven comparables that I felt like did a um, good job of representing um, what we have here. I did not find anything that was exact in all of those, which I think that that probably is similar among other um, people that, you know, you don't really find exactly um, your house. Yep. Um, unless you live in like a track that is like cu cookie cutters, but <clears throat> that's right. not us. Um, so then I took those and um, I uh, took the um, average um, sale price per square foot. Um, and then I divided it by seven and it came out to be um, $125 per square foot. And then I multiplied that by my square footage, which is 1545. And that's how I... Um, got the 193 um, uh, assessment. Okay. Tell us a little bit about the house, um, you know, what the upgrades might be inside the house, what the, you know, status or quality of, of the so kitchens, bathrooms, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, um, upgrades. Um, paint. I have three kids <laughs> and two dogs. <laughs> so, um, you know, when my two-year-old uh, decided that the wall was his canvas, we um, <laughs> we did some painting. He now thinks that it's, you know, his, um, he can hammer on the walls because he likes to use a hammer. Um, uh, um, any upgrades? Um, uh, oh, we did, we, we made a little playroom in the basement for the kids. Um, we're, I feel like we're running out of space for that um, and storage space. Um, what else? Oh, we put a new roof on. Um, how many years ago was that now? It had to be, I think, right before the pandemic, so maybe about three years ago. Okay. So kitchens and baths, um, are, they, are they older or updated? Uh, the... Um, Kitchen has had some painting, and we did get some new appliances in the kitchen um, and countertops. Okay. How about the baths? Nope, no update to the no baths. Older. Okay. okay. Yeah. Hmm. Great. Any, Is that about everything? Any other questions? I think so. Um, I, I think I sent, I don't know if you can see the the paperwork that I sent in, if it's sitting in front of you. Yep, we have it. When I was, oh, okay, great, okay, all right. Yeah, then that's it. Okay. All right, you did a great job. So Thank we'll, you. <laughs> we'll go over everything, and the town will send you something out uh, within a few weeks. Okay, great. Um, so there's nothing that you can tell me right now, like preliminary? No, we can't, because we gotta, we got to go over it and, and discuss it and make a decision. 
So. Oh, okay. Yep. All right. Wonderful. Then I, I look forward to hearing from you guys. And you, like, if you don't lower it in any way, you, you guys will tell me why, right? Um, I, th I don't know. If I'm not, yeah, I'm not, <laughs> not sure, sure what, what they do. I'm not I sure how, what the communication is. But... Saying what it is, I don't think there's a reason. No, no, I don't think they tell they you. They could that. go to small claims court if they want to, if they don't agree. Oh, I see, yeah, I right. see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very good, Ben. Thank you for reviewing our information that okay. we submitted. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Yep. Have a great day. You too. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye. <laughs> Good afternoon. Yeah, hello. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you today? Doing great. Uh, Good. Before we get started, let me just quickly swear you in. So, uh, okay. do you swear that the information that you're about to give is, to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? Yes, it is. Great. All right, so we have it on record. Uh, just please state your name and the property that you are here to talk about. Yep, it's Lee Bataji, and it's 4 Pine Meadow Drive, Penfield, New York. Great. Uh, so, based on the records I have in front of me, uh, it looks like the town has you uh, currently assessed at 340000 and Correct. you're looking for a reduction to 285000 Yeah, Yeah, we just found out our neighbor next door at Six Pine Meadow, she just got it reduced to two eighty five, and, and the house is basically the, the same house, and it's a little bigger than ours, actually, and a lot bigger. So I just wanted to see if we could uh, be, you know, at the even level playing field, too. Okay. Um, well, I mean, unfortunately, we don't really have uh, the board itself is does not work for the town, so we don't have okay. uh, access to the information about what that particular property did okay. or, or did not do in terms of its assessment. Um, oh, okay. But we can we can certainly look at what kind of comp data is out there to see what the market value of the home should be. Um, okay. You know, so, and I think you had uh, prevent, presented in your packet uh, a group of comparable yep. transactions. Um, right, Correct. Know, So we could certainly take a look at those. Um, did you want, maybe it might be a good idea for you, us, for you to give us an idea of, you know, the status of your house, so to speak, you know, where, what is yep. the conditions, you know, what's the kitchen and baths look like, what kind of upgrades yeah. do you have? Yeah, so, so we, yeah, we built the house in 93 with their kids going through college and everything. We really have not done any upgrades to the house as far as it's the original kitchen, the original formica, the original floors, um, so in the original carpeting. So basically it does need a lot of updating. So that was another consideration too. Okay. We are, we also My wife still, too. Um, we still have like some of the painters, the builders paint on the walls and stuff. The children are now just finishing college, so maybe in the future we'll put money towards that. But we also live two houses down off of Plank Road, which is a busy street. We yeah. don't have sidewalks. We don't have lights like a lot of the neighborhoods around you do. You know, I think that's something else that needs to be considered. We we haven't let our house go downhill, but we've never really done anything to, to boost it up either. Okay, very good. Well, we have all the information that you, you presented. Does anybody have any nope. specific questions? No or? other questions. Nope. No you questions. did great, thank you. All right. Okay. So, so yeah, so the, the process is we take all the information that you provided, uh, you know, we, we look it over, we, we make our decision, we let the, vo the town know, and then okay. the town will get back to you uh, probably sometime during June uh, with a letter okay. indicating what, uh, what the final conclusion was. Oh, okay. So it takes a few weeks, then you find out in the mail. Okay. It does. Yep. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and and again, there's no way for you to look at the next door neighbor's new assessment. There's no way to find that for before you make a decision. We can we can look into that. We can we can ask okay. the uh, assessor's office what uh, what information they have, and we can kind of take that okay. into account too. We just don't have right. that information yeah. in front of us right now. Right. That's fair. Uh, yeah, and it's number six Pine Meadow. If you need the number. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you very much. All right. Thanks. Have All a great right. day. Thank you. You too. Have a great day. Bye bye. All right, bye bye. Yep. Six. We did drop to two eighty five. Did you? Did you?
Good afternoon. Hello. Hello, can you hear us? I can hear you. Okay, great. Welcome to the Board of Assessment Review. Um, before we get started, let me just quickly uh, swear you in. Uh, so do you swear that the information that you're about to give is to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? Yes. Great. All right, so we have it on the record. Uh, just please state your name and the property you are wanting to discuss today. Keith Warren, 1292 Jackson Road, Western New York. All right, great. So according to the records that I have in front of me, um, the town has your property assessed at 239,800, and you're looking right. for a reduction of that to 166,000, is that correct? Yes, sir. All right, great. So um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about the house and um, how you came to the conclusion that 166,000 was the uh, market value of your house. I haven't put any money into it, any improvements into it. I work out of town, so it's basically just the house that I sleep in. So you don't you don't live in the house? Uh, on occasion, I'll be there this weekend. Okay. So in terms of other properties in the area and, and what might be considered a comparable sale, do you have any thoughts on what might be a reasonable comp to, to look at to assess the value? Uh, if you go off a of square footage, you got uh, something like 1403 Plank Road. Okay. 1399 Plank Road as well. Okay. You purchased it in 2004 for 160? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And maybe tell us a little bit about the in inside, you know, the kitchens and baths, are they older, newer? What uh, What's the status of the house? Uh, no, there's been no improvements to the house. So it's all original. Just original from? From when it was built in '93? No, there was. There's been a uh, new countertop put in, but it's the same stuff for Mica. Okay. And the, and the kitchen. So. All right. All so, improvements with bathrooms. Do you believe, sir, that it's worth about the same as what you paid for it a, a many, yes, many sir. years ago? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I think we got everything we need then. We'll go over everything and then uh, we get a number to the town and they'll get back to you in several weeks. Okay, thank you. Thanks right. so much. Thanks so much. Have a good day. Are you too. You too. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. Hi, how are you tonight? Good, how are you? Doing great. So welcome to the Board of Assessment Review. Um, before okay. we get started, I just need to swear you in. So sure. uh, do you swear that the information that you are about to give is to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? Yes. Great. So just so we have it on the record, uh, just can you state your name and the property that you are going to be talking about tonight? Yes, um, it's Jennifer Petronas, and it's 8 Fox Hunt Circle, um, 14450. Okay, great. So the uh, information that I've got is that the town currently has you assessed at uh, 543500 and you're looking yes. for a reduction down to 510000 Is that accurate? Yes. Okay, great. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the house and how you came to the conclusion that 510,000 was uh, the appropriate fair market value? Yep, um, so uh, the house is right on our street. Um, so we're built by the same builder within the same few years of each other um, with pretty comparable square footage. So six Fox Hunt circles, three Fox Hunt circles, a little bit bigger than ours and 14 Fox Hunt circle, um, all had previously had similar assessments to ours um, and went up not to the degree that ours did. So, for example, like right next door, Six Fox Hunt Circle, um, their previous assessment was 413, um, 100, and ours was 415, 800. Theirs went up to around, I think, 511, and ours is going up to 543, 
Um, and just because they're very, you know, comparable, if you look at um, the houses, the builder, the years that they were built, um, we actually have less um, acres in terms of our property outside. So I just didn't, was trying to understand why it would be such a variation to the similar properties, even right just on our street. Okay. Um, I guess tell us a little bit about the house itself compared to that one. Is there, you know, you, are they, I know you said they're kind of built around the same time, but do you have any yes. additional items, you know, no. on your exterior or upgrades in the interior or anything like that? No, nope, no, really um, similar, you know, as far as I know, um, in terms of we don't, yeah, have anything um, that would make it, because our previous assessments, we're very similar, you know, within 2,000 of each other. And now ours would be around 30,000 more than theirs. Um, and in terms of exterior, um, very similar other than they have a little bit more. I think their acres are 0.6 and ours is 0.49. Okay. Hmm. So we were looking at the data that you had uh, provided. So I know you uh, submitted a few comparable sales as uh, as support. Um, so we're just kind of reviewing that as well. Um, sure. Is there anything else that uh, you would like to add to the information that you provided us, or does um, that no, cover just, everything? Yeah, it's really just the houses. You know, like I had mentioned, that are right on our street. Um, very same builder, um, very similar in terms of, you know, like I said, the houses themselves. Um, so they seem very comparable. I guess I was just trying to understand why ours would be that much more. Oh, yeah. And three Fox Hunt Circle, they actually have um, more square footage than us and have a indoor or in-ground pool, deck, patio. Um, and theirs was assessed also 30,000 lower than ours on the new assessment. And then you said they have a pool too? Yeah. All right. Okay, any other, any other questions? Nope. Got some sales here to look at. All right, so I think that's what okay. everything we need. So we have the information that we've got um, that you submitted to us. And uh, okay. we will go over everything, and we will give our answer back to the okay. town, and the town will get back to you uh, sometime right. during June. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate your help. All right. Great. Thanks so much. Have a great night. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yep. Three does have pools. So. Hello, good evening. Hey, good evening. Dwight Greenley here. Hi, Dwight. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Good. All right, before we uh, get going here, let me just uh, quickly swear you in. So uh, do you swear that the information that you're about to give is, to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? Absolutely. Great. So just uh, for the record, just can you state your name and the property address that we're going to be talking about tonight? Yes, my name is Dwight Greenlee, and we're talking about 75 Parkwood Lane, Central New York, that I own. All right, great. So according to uh, the records that we've got in front of us, the town currently has you assessed at 263200 and you're looking correct. for a, an adjustment down to 225000 Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, great. So if you could just tell us a little bit about the property, uh, the house, you know, what kind of uh, upgrades and, and interior you, you've got um, and what sort of uh, analysis you kind of looked at to come to a conclusion of 225000 Yep. All right. So our house was built by Sealer back in the 60s, um, four bedrooms and, you know, living room, kitchen, um, have a two-car garage, have a porch on the back, a deck on the back. Um, now, like I said, 1960s built. We did an upgrade in 2016, and we sided the house and put a new roof on. Um, and we went out over the garage, and that was all with death in, in the, in the uh, 2017 or 18 assessment. Caught all of those improvements. Uh, we're on 0.35 acres of land, which is pretty common for this road. Um, 
Yeah, I think that's, it's kind of, if you drive up and down the road, it's, it's kind of just like all the other houses. Um, you know, we're not a, it's not lavish or anything. How about modernization um, in kitchens or baths? Any any new features there? Um, in 2016, we, we added a bath upstairs and a closet upstairs uh, next to the bedroom to make it a master bathroom. Again, that was done in 2016, and that's been incorporated into the uh, assessment since then. Um, yeah, paved the driveway again. Kitchen older? Uh, nope, that was done in 1999. Okay. We did an upgrade to the kitchen. So I guess it's, it could be considered older now, but uh, right. yeah, 1999. Mm -hmm. um, the assessment, or how I came up with this, I was looking to reach a, um, a reasonable market value. When I think of market value, I think of a willing buyer and a willing seller at, um, you know, in an open market. And since we're not selling, the closest I could come was I went on to the, the data you provided, which was great, of recent sales in the area. And I sorted on Parkwood, Sawmill, and Wedgwood. Those are uh, three streets right next to each other going north on Five Mile Line Road. And I looked at all the colonial houses, and this is on an exhibit in the back of the package. Yep, we've got that uh, in front of us. Handed in. Okay. Um, and I looked at all the, the colonial. I just sorted by colonial. You can go on the database and do it. Um, and then I looked at the year they were built, you know, the number of bedrooms, bathrooms, the square footage. And these are recent relevant sales that are very close to my house and um, some of them built by the same builder. So these are all recent sales. And when I looked at the average price of those that are close to my square footage, that came to about 213000 as an average price. When I looked at the square foot, sales per square foot, and said, okay, let's do it by a different calculation, the average square footage price was 116 per square foot, and I took that by my square footage of 1936 and came up with 224.9. So I could find relevant recent sales in my area to get me to a number that's more near the 225. What I couldn't find was any information that got it to 260000 So as I went through the data, I came up with that number as more reasonable. Um, I've lived in Penfield for 26, 28 years. Um, I have no problem paying my fair share of taxes. And I think that was the key word, is like the fair share of taxes. <laughs> I can come up with relevant data that gets me to 225. I'm willing to pay taxes on that. I think that's reasonable uh, for the area and comparative sales in the last three years. Um, to 263, I just I just can't I can't find any numbers that get me to that. So. Okay, great. Sounds good. Yeah. Good. So you uh, got all the data that you presented. You, got, you did a good job putting that information together. So that's helpful. Um, okay. We will go through that and have our deliberation and come to our conclusion and we will let the town know and then the town will uh, reach out with to you via a letter I believe in sometime during June. Okay well I appreciate your time and I appreciate the opportunity to use the appeal process and, and try and reach some compromise. Great no thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you chairman. Have, have a good a, night. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. That's, uh, uh, good evening. Hi, good evening. This is Megan McKenna. Hi, Megan. How are you? Hi, good. Um, I'll apologize in advance that I have a couple-week-old infant with me here. She's being quiet right now, but just in case. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, no, no, no worries. All right, before we get started, okay. let me just uh, quickly swear you in. Um, so do you swear okay. that the information that you're about to give is, to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? I do. Great. So, again, just for the record, uh, if you don't mind just giving us your name again, as well as the property that you are talking to us about tonight. Sure. Um, this is Megan McKenna. I'm uh, here about 70 White Village Drive 
in the town of Penfield, uh, 14625. Great. And so the information that, uh, that we've got in front of us is that the town currently has the property assessed at 280000 and you are looking for a reduction down to 255000 Is that accurate? Correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so tell us a little bit about the house and, and how you come to the conclusion that 255000 is the appropriate fair market value. Okay, so um, we are kind of the poster children for how the COVID pandemic um, really forced our hand in a situation. Sorry about the baby crying. That's okay. Um, uh, we had um, an ailing parent um, and our child care needs were at issue. Um, and we needed to move into a ranch style house uh, pretty immediately. Um, so we did find this house, um, bid on it, and we know we overpaid for it. Um, the Even the assessment that we got at the time um, wouldn't assess for the amount that we were willing to pay for it so that we could move into a ranch without stairs so that we could have grandparents uh, help us out with child care. Um, so long story short, the assessment was an in-person assessment. Uh, for the bank in order to secure our mortgage. Um, the assessor said at most they could appraise it for was 255. Um, and he had mentioned to me that that was even, you know, uh, based on the comps in the neighborhood, pretty high for uh, the best he could do anyway. Um, so at that time, um, you know, even though the sales price was higher, um, that was really due to our hand being forced um, to deal with uh, our circumstances at the time in this crazy uh, pandemic um, situation. And so uh, our application is basically that it shouldn't exceed 255. Even the 255 is higher than any purchase price of any home that's sold um, in our neighborhood in the last one and a half years. So. Um, I think the highest that was on our street or uh, within, let's say, uh, just this neighborhood, which is two cul-de-sacs, um, and immediately on uh, Old Browncroft here, um, the highest that any house has gone for that I'm aware of um, as of March anyway, when I filled out the initial paperwork, was uh, 230000 So um, even the 255 far exceeds that. Um, our square footage in the house is only 1555. Um, it's smaller even than some of the houses that have recently sold. Uh, our kitchen has the original 1950s cabinet. The bathroom is the original pink 50s tile with a baby blue bathtub. I mean, some of the house has been updated and painted and it was in you know good shape when we moved in, but um, it's not like there's been amazing renovations or something that was the reason that our purchase price was so high. Um, in our opinion, it was really just because of the fact that we were desperate to move into a ranch um, and had to do it rather quickly. Um, so long story short, <laughs> that's our position on it. Okay. So when you were buying it, there were probably multiple offers on the property at the time? There were, yeah, um, and we had had an escalation clause um, that said that we would go a certain amount over the highest bid, which is how we got to our number. Um, so it was quite a bit higher than uh, any of the other bids to ensure we would get it. Okay. Anybody have any questions? No. No, no questions. That sounds very good. All right. Well, great. So we've got a lot of good information here to look at. Um, we will take all of that under advisement and make our decision, and then we will let the town know what our decision was, and they will reach out to you via a letter sometime uh, probably in the month of June. Okay. Um, if I could just add one last thing. Sure. Um, it, it would also be if... Um, our position that our house really should only be compared to the houses within this uh, cul-de-sac area. Um, one of the issues is that our little neighborhood is off of the really busy part of Browncroft. We actually have our street sign, if you're familiar with it, 
is actually like one of those highway <laughs> signs for White Village Drive um, off of the part that goes through Ellison Park. That's a 55 mile per hour um, section. Um, so it is a little bit of a, a unique street being off of such a busy highway. Um, I think that kind of kept the housing prices on our street pretty low um, just because it's kind of a dangerous turnoff and, um, and it is right off of a very busy street. Um, so, you know, if you were going to compare it, for example, to a house that's a couple miles down off of Browncroft, I don't think that those are really um, accurate comps um, neighborhood-wise, I'll put it that way. Um, so just another thing to, to mention. Okay. No, we'll take that under advisement. I appreciate that. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much to all of you for uh, hearing our arguments on it. And uh, best of luck. Thank you. Okay. Thank you thank very you much. Very Have much. a great night. Thanks. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, this is Roberta Bettino. Hi, Roberta. How are you? I'm fine. Good. Welcome to the Board of Assessment Review. So, Thank you for your time. Sure. Before we get started, uh, let me just quickly swear you in. So do you swear that the information that you're about to give is, to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? Yes. Great. So if you can just for the record, again, just give us your name and the property address that you're going to be talking to us about tonight. Yes, my name is Roberta Bettino. I am the owner of 680 Sable Oaks Lane in Penfield. Okay, great. Thank you. So I provided some documentation. I assume people have the pictures that I'll reference. Yep. yep. Yes, we do. Ex yep. Absolutely. So I just want to make sure that we're all talking about the same thing. So the, the town has you assessed at 340000 and you're looking for a reduction down to two hundred and seventy. Is that correct? Well, yes, I'm, I'm going to show that um, I am a smaller unit, um, but yes, that's what I've submitted. Okay, great. So go ahead and uh, let us know um, about your unit and how you came to the co conclusion of 270000 Okay, well, a lot of research, <laughs> a lot of numbers. <laughs> math. I used, I'm retired now, or laid off, but now retired, and uh, so math and finances were a numbers game. But anyway, so appreciate your time. Um, what I've submitted is, well, if you've ever, we're on a private road called Sable Oaks, and there's 14 units, and from the road, we all look very similar. But, in fact, there are three different models, and I have this, a smaller unit. And what's not obvious from the road is not only the size of the unit differences, but the location does make a difference. So I have submitted a chart with information so you can compare the spreadsheet chart that shows you specifically the three, uh, you asked me to provide three recent sales, so I used the three sales on my street as they were more relevant. And I, using information from the realtors for the sale of those units, I was able to obtain the, the square footage. And the the biggest difference with my unit is it is the I was the first building. The town actually came in it um, as the builder was in a rush. He didn't allow modification, so got a small unit, and I did not finish. As you see from the pictures, the basement. Most other units did. The other difference with the locations that my building is in and a couple others are that. We do not have backyards. We have what we call a rocky slope, as you can see from the picture of my unit. And the other big change that's happened, especially since the last assessment, is when I when we purchased uh, when I purchased originally the the lower level uh, development was going to be condominiums or rent, a homeowner owned, and over the there was issues anyway. The bottom line is it ended up being apartments. Um, and as you can see, my building now faces the first apartment building from my, my deck. And 
the issue we have there is while the builder, I went to many of the meetings with the town. The town, the builder told you that it was going to be underground parking. He was going to hide the air conditioning units, et cetera. The reality is I have, this is what I look at, and, and there is a large garage door the, in my end area. The parking is not under. So the point of the, the pictures there was to show the location is different for me versus the recent sales, which are on the other printed pa colored page, to show you that those units not only have um, yardage in the back, walk out lower levels, um, they also have finished base, full finished basements. So adding more, the point of what I'm getting at is in the, you guys provided me great tools to help my analysis. And one of the key things is look at location, look at size. And the other factor in this location is uh, there's an established gun club. We knew it was there when I purchased. It was the pop, pop, pop of guns. It has gotten a little bit louder. But I am, my building, the building I'm in is closest. So when it comes to um, trying not to, I have not attempted to sell it, obviously, but uh, the point of the story is that um, while the other units have a lot of nice features and added square footage, mine is a, a very simple one level, no backyard, uh, no lower, no fully finished lower level. And that one other factor, and I know this doesn't come into play as far as uh, it, we are a homeowners association and we own the road, but that does come into play when you're trying to sell because unfortunately we are having assessments on our and as homeowners we are picking up the cost. One of the major, as I'm sure the town is aware, the amount of traffic on our road that was estimated to be only 14 homes is with Amazon deliveries and the apartment building people not going the right ways. We've obviously now have to maintain our road. We're getting a special assessment within two years for that, and we had another one this year on a different issue. I, I'm not here to whine to you about that, but the fact is that comes into play when I'm trying to sell my house. And so those are my facts that I put forward. So what I did is to come up with my amount was to look at some of the, the recent sale and the problem. Um, I, I went to, for example, 632. I looked at what you've assessed it now, kind of looked at what that was per square foot, and kind of worked backwards into some of my numbers. Okay, great. Okay. Looks Any like you, questions? No, no, it looks like you did a lot of analysis, which is great. So we, uh, we appreciate that. We like it when people come prepared. So... Uh, what we're going to do, unless, uh, does anybody have any questions? Before? Nope, all looks really good. Set. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to go through uh, the information you gave us. Uh, we'll make our assessment and let the town know our decision, and they will get back to you uh, sometime in June with a, with a letter uh, indicating what that was. Okay. Okay. Well, I appreciate and glad you're, that you're taking a look at the information, and I appreciate your everyone's time tonight. You guys right. have a good evening. Thank, Thank you. You too. <laughs> all right. Bye-bye. Bye. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. Good. Welcome to the Board of Assessment Review. So uh, before Thanks. we get started, let me just uh, swear you in. So do, okay. you, do you swear that the information that you're about to give is, to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? Yes. Great. So just for, for the record, would you mind uh, just giving us your name and telling us the address of the property you're going to talk to us about tonight? Yes, it's John Petruska, 1057 Penfield Road, Rochester, New York. Okay. And just so that we all are working from the same page, just want to make sure we have the right information. The uh, town currently has you assessed at 135000 and you're looking yep. for a reduction down to $118,000. Uh, yes. Okay. All right. So and, uh, go ahead. 
I was going to say, go ahead and uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your house, uh, what, uh, you know, kind of the status is on the inside in terms of, you know, it's, whether it's modernized or not or what, what needs to be done, um, and then how you kind of came to the conclusion that 118000 was was the appropriate market value of the home. Okay. Well, it's still got the original 1950s windows and floors on it, which need to be redone. The wooden floors need to be redone. Uh, I'm still on a septic system. Uh, the driveway is probably a second top is a second top driveway, which means it has to be completely torn out and redone as it's falling apart. I've got the old mineral siding that needs to be replaced because it's cracking. Uh, garage door and fit in this ACVAC is uh, 20 years old as well. Um, and with the seven properties I've given you in the chart, those all have. Uh, I have a quarter acre. Those have better than a half acre, most of them. Half acre or better. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I also, my driveway goes directly onto Penfield Road, which is a busy street and makes it less desirable. Okay. What about, uh, you know, kitchens, bathrooms? How, what's the status of those? They're original. original? Uh, the, uh, the bathroom was retiled because it was falling apart. This shower was, yes. Okay. All right. Any questions anybody's uh, got? Yeah. Or? No. You, no? All right, you gave us a, a lot of information to look at here, which is helpful. Um, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll go over all this information, uh, have our conversations, and make our decision. We will let the town know uh, what that is, and they will get in touch with you via a letter uh, probably sometime during the month of June. Okay, thank you very much. All right, well, thank you very much. Have a great night. Thank you. You as well. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Got the three tabs. Jared will do it. Okay. I have two here in case one. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, how are you tonight? I'm good, thank you. Good. Uh, thank you for taking your time. Sure. My name is Virginia Morrison. Nice to meet you. And I live at the... Nice to meet you. All right. Uh, do you want me to start, or do you want well, to talk first? Sure. Let me, before we get started, let me just go ahead and swear you in. So okay. uh, do you swear that the information that you are about to give us is, to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? Yes. Great. Definitely. Yeah. So if you could just, uh, for the record, just kind of state the address of the property that you're going to be talking to us about tonight. 15 Armacale Luster, Webster, New York, 14580. Okay, great. So um, it, based on the information that we have in front of us, uh, it looks like the town has the property assessed at 372000 and you're looking for a reduction down to 355000 Is that correct? At least, yes, at least. Okay. My my home my home was built in two thousand and four. Okay. Okay. It's one or excuse me, point four one acres and it's twenty one forty two square feet. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about the house? Um, you know, what kind of and the what the it's status a, is? It's a brick. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry, go ahead. I interrupted you. It's a, it's a ranch, three bedrooms, two and a half bath. Are all no the, is the kitchen and bathroom and the other rooms uh, still original or have you up, remodeled them at any point? There's been nothing done to this home. That's one of the reasons that I'm, um, I'm an 80, I'm an 80 year old widow, sir, and I'm going to be selling the house within two to three years. Uh, it has to have a roof, it has to have gutters, it needs carpeting. Uh, there's no granite countertops in my home. It's not professionally landscaped. There's no deck. Uh, the floors will probably most likely have to be refinished, uh, the hardwoods, and um, I have no pool. It's all original. Nothing has, we've not done a thing to it. We're, we were retired. I lost my husband, and it just sits there now. And as I say, if I could, you know, within a few years, I will be moving. And um, I would say that the assessment is even under 355, but I would be more than happy if we could get to that number. Um, the uh, property across the street just uh, was listed, I think, three weeks ago. 
Uh, she's got a much larger lot, 0.57. Um, it was built in 2016. She's got 23, 22 square feet, um, four bedrooms, three full baths. Um, it was sold on June of 2019 for 332.5, and she's asking 400,000 for it now. Is that a one-story or two-story home? It's a two-story home. Okay, because that sort of ranches are far superior than than two-story homes. So. <laughs> well, they didn't tell us that when we built it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we built it because <laughs> we built it so that we could. Uh, be as uh, self-sufficient as we possibly could um, uh, in our in our uh, elder years, which is exactly what we did. Sure, yep. exactly what we did. And it's uh, as I say, I know that the ranch two two doors, or excuse me, three doors down on the same side of my it's my house. It's identical to my home. He has a, a large deck on the back of it. His lot is bigger. And that would be um, seven Armacale Luster. Their home was built in 2008, four years early, later than mine. Same thing, three beds, two and a half baths. That one is professionally landscaped. It has a large lot. Uh, it was renovated prior to the sale, and they sold it in November of 2019 for 300000 And it's the same identical house as mine. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you've given us a lot of information. Any, anything else you want to add, or we can go with this? Well, I need to ask my daughter if she has anything further. Okay. Regina, Regina, are you there? Yes, I'm, I'm still here. <laughs> um, no, the only thing I would just reiterate is the fact that the house was built in 2004. They went with the bare minimums as far as any of the um, fixtures and, you know, um, appliances and things like that and nothing has been upgraded and when my mother does decide to put her house on the market again we do know that either it's going to have to be sold as is which will reduce the price and or we would have to probably make a huge investment as far as upgrades in order to uh, meet the assessed price even at 355 so that's the other the other things i just wanted to to mention Okay. Great. Well, thank you very much. We'll take all this into consideration, get a value well, to the town, you. and you'll hear back from the town uh, probably by end of June. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. you too. Thank you. Have a nice thank evening. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. How are you tonight? I'm good. How are you? Uh, we're doing great, thanks. So welcome to the Board of Assessment Review. Uh, before we get started, just want to uh, swear you in. So if uh, uh, do you swear that the information that you're about to give is, to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? Yes, it is. I, I mean, I got it all from Penfield's assessment um, <laughs> and from... The, I got it from you guys, and I got it from the Monroe County um, portal. Okay. So we assume right. they're correct. Yeah. We, we meant the information you're going to tell us about your house, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's what we that, want. That's what we were trying to <laughs> say. You. Yep. All right. So just for the record, uh, if you wouldn't mind stating your name and the address of the property that we're going to be talking about. Patricia Wallace. My husband, Thomas Wallace, is here, too. And our home is 5 Pearl Bush, Penfield, 14526. Okay, great. So uh, just to make sure we're, we're all talking about the same thing, the records that we show here is that the town has you assessed at 341200 and you're looking for a reduction in that down to $304,850. Yes. Okay. And did you see why, uh, like, did you see that... Um, what we had done was we researched all these different homes that were similar. Um, what I had said originally when I talked to Penfield was our house, we do not have, like, you can, <coughs> excuse me, you can see.
see, we do not have a big two-story two story foyer or anything like that in our house. We have no none of the wow factor. I was saying our house is like the houses that would be more similar to Coachman's and Brom. It's an older... It's an older style house that the builder agreed to build in here, probably because he needed to build houses at the time. I don't know. <laughs> it wasn't what he was building, but it was what we wanted. We did not want a lot of open, wasted space. I mean, not that that's not beautiful. And that's what attracts most people. But we don't have any of the wow factors like that in our house. Okay. We, we don't have, like, even a big, you know, like, people have big um, jetted bathtubs, and um, we don't have anything like that. Okay. Did you, did you locate any comparable sales that we could compare to your home to get up to a You know, I, I, really, I really couldn't compare the I really couldn't. That there was one house that I had, um, there was one house that had sold more recently, um, well, it, it was the end of 2020, and it was on Jackson Road, and it was by our same builder. The house is bigger than our house, and it has, um, it had a big, it has a huge patio with a permanent pergola or whatever. And again, it has one of those large two-story foyers. It has a whirlpool tub. It has a big, you know, garage. It has vaulted ceilings in the master. Unfortunately, we don't have the wow factors that we are not going to be able to sell our house for the kind of places that other houses demand because we don't have it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I went through houses that I, the houses that, um, that my husband and I researched that we put on the paper that have all the proposed assessments and the prices per square foot that they are being assessed at I think you could see on the paper that we gave you that they all had, um, they had, you know, um, what do you call it, wow factors, and they were newer, like they were houses that had all the different things in there. In fact, there's even a house on our street, or not on our street, in our development that I didn't even put in that is assessed at 318,000. It's, it is, um, like 150 less square feet than us, but it has a three car garage. It has a big open foyer and it has an 800 something square foot patio. Can I ask who built your house? Um, oh, Paul Petrella. I'm not sure. Like, we haven't had a kitchen remodel or that. No, I mean, unfortunately, we're senior citizens. We, I mean, not unfortunately. I guess, I guess, yeah. <laughs> Getting pretty old there. But um, we haven't had the updates. And right now, we're in a situation where Mark Valentine with the town of Penfield, my whole backyard is full of moss. We're, we're not even getting... Um, treatment this year for lawn service because he has to have some drainage thing dredged and I don't even think we could sell our house right now the way it hmm. I mean our backyard is like curly moss Mark's been down here to look at it hmm. Interesting. all right very good well we got all your information here is there anything else you want to add to that or no, I really think that I have, um, I really think that, I mean, I, I'm not trying to do anything. I'm just trying to do what's fair. I, I think that, 
I'm not trying to pull any fast one at all. I think that I wrote out all the information about the amenities that different houses had and, you know, three-car driveways and all the different things that we don't have, yet they are all lower per square foot than we are. Mm -hmm. Very good. We will look everything over that you have here. And make it. Thank a you. I appreciate oh, that. That's why we're here. No problem. The town will get back Thank to you, you probably by the end of June with a letter in the mail letting you know our findings. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate your help. Thank you. Have a good evening. You're welcome. You too. Bye. Okay. All right. So just to real quick, let me just swear you in. So do you swear that the information you're about to give us is the best to the best of your knowledge is accurate and truthful? Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. I hope this is a comedy hour for you right now or 10 minutes. <laughs> it's I don't even it's know. all good. So. All right. So just so that we have it on record, um, mm -hmm. just state your name and the address of the property we're going to be talking um, about. It's Larissa Macahon Croup at 15 Suites View Lane. Okay. And so the records that, that we have in front of us here is that currently the property is being assessed by the town at 570500 and you're requesting a reduction of that to 395000 Yes, that, that is, is that correct. Mm -hmm. All right. So why don't uh, you kind of tell us a little bit about the house um, and why you believe that 395000 is the fair market value? Um, first of all, there's not too many comparisons in regards to, you know, where we live and everything right now. Um, there are some newly built homes and so forth, but we had moved in back in 2015. And in regards to that, that's when things were pretty um, reasonable and we weren't um, dealing with any overinflation as far as the, um, the market and so forth and the housing costs and prices right now, as well as with the um, building costs. Um, so right Right now, um, I'm noting right here from the National Association of Home Builders that the sky, the cost of building, obviously over the past fifth, um, 12 months, has um, skyrocketed to um, well over, you know, 26.1 percent and so forth. Um, again, our house was built in 2015. It's a very, very modest home. I even have pictures of some of the things that the um, that the builder ended up doing incorrectly. And in order for us to be moving, there's going to be we're going to have a lot of repairs that we're going to have to be making and everything else. Um, we weren't able to recoup any of the um, money that we had at that point because we would have had to have taken the builder to court. And at that time, um, being a young family and paying for the expenses of, you know, our children and everything else and so forth, um, that wasn't going to be something that um, that was feasible at the time. But in regards to the quality of the construction and everything else, um, with the... Um, looking at some of our uh, new neighbors and everything, um, it does not match up to what others have done. And right now, um, you're basically trying to assess our house. I mean, that's a over a 45% jump, okay? So we're going all the way from, uh, you know, 2015, 16 at the time, where, you know, we had it at around 395 and going up to 570, that's, you know, as you know, $175,000 jump. And also um, recently there was um, an article that um, was reviewed and everything in the Washington Post that talked about the states and regions um, across the United States right now as far as um, the home price increases. And, you know, there's other states across the country that have the prices have gone up and everything um, exponentially. However, with our house being now assessed close, to well above 45%, um, that outpaces right now what 
the national average is. And as you know, um, we're in what we would call in some very dire straight economic conditions right now. Um, some people call it, you know, 7% inflation, what have you. No, we're in hyperinflation. Let's get real here. It's been, it's well over 20%. And um, at this point in our lives and everything, um, you know, looking at this assessment and knowing that our taxes will be going up despite the fact that people will say, oh no, you could put it through the system and check things out and what have you. We know, let's be honest here, our taxes will be going up, okay? We cannot do this any longer, especially in this state, okay? Where when it, in combination with the taxes that are being increased for the school and property and everything else and so forth, it's, it's gonna be close to 70% of our paychecks, okay? And we'll be left with almost 30% to live on at this point. Um, and looking back again with how those home prices have increased in other states and in cities that are much larger than um, Rochester right now and you know the, the, the suburban community and everything, I mean, you're, you're talking San Diego and Las Vegas went up 22%, but our home is going to go above 45, almost 50%. Um, we had a neighbor who recently sold their house and everything, two houses down. Um, this house is a ranch that is probably well over twice the size of ours, completely finished basement. We haven't done anything to our house except for, I don't know, planting trees. And I don't know if that's something that comes about. Do we get taxed on our trees? Do we get taxed on you know any of our landscaping or what have you? Um, so this house that recently sold was for $420,000. And this is for a floor area of well over 4,000 square feet. But you have a house too that they have a in-ground pool, um, the acreage is almost four acres at this point. Um, the address that? Uh, that would be nine Sweets View Drive. Is that 4,000 square feet? Yeah, it's probably it, at least that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes, but we know for a fact that, you know, they have a full finished basement as well. So when you take a look at that square footage and it's livable space down there, um, we're just, you know, living on our first floor and we have a few modest um, you know, bedrooms upstairs. Is there anything else that I should be adding? Um, so again, um, you know, we were just the lonely little um, house there for about seven years. And now all of a sudden all these other homes came up in construction and you know, our house is not nearly what those other homes are as far as if you're looking at the inside or the outside, the quality of the siding, the quality of the roof and everything else. I mean, this really was just, you know, our next stepping stone of a home, but we didn't have all of these upgrades and let alone the building materials that were, you know, um, the high end. I would say. And I have pictures here on my iPad to show as well the shoddy construction. Like I said, we're going to have to redo our main um, bathroom right now because all of the tile has fallen completely apart and everything else. So, and many other things within the house. Every single door has to be personally taken down. Okay, every door inside, interior doors have to be taken down, refinished, resanded, and everything else. I mean, if you would take a look at some of the molding that doesn't even match up as well. I mean, we're gonna have to hire, in order to sell this home, we will have to hire a quality contractor, somebody who's able to, you know, who has precise finishing skills um, to make this house presentable. Who built the house? Um, Eric Gioka. Oh, I have heard of Gioka. Mm-hmm, yep, <clears throat> mm-hmm. Did yep. you realize this shortly after you completed it that there were issues? Or? Oh, tons of issues. And we met with him and everything else, and um, there was a small amount that was left in regards to um, you know him being paid and so forth. Um, we had withheld a little bit of it. I mean, it was all $5,000 at that point. So we have tons and tons of repairs. But it, it, at this point, we, you know, we're basically where we, need to stay right now. We're not in a position to be moving elsewhere as well. Um, you know, at that time too, my 
husband's company was down, downsided, you know, downsized, and he had to find, um, you know, a different position and so forth. And as you know, around here, you know, there's there's nothing much that you could be working at right now. So, so this is where we're at. And I know um, another home in the area as well. I believe it's. This is the one, if it's five suites view, maybe. Um, yeah. I believe that house is probably, I'm guesstimating right now after speaking to everybody, um, almost about third, this current new assessment, this, okay, this reassessment that's happening right now, um, that house is probably, the, their new assessment probably went up about 30,000. So our house is like 30 to $40,000 off from that home. And I'm thinking, okay, again, that house has, you know, finished areas and stuff. The comps on here aren't even accurate and so forth. And between the, the square footage and, and everything else. So. We can check those out. Check them yeah. out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Very thorough report. I hope so. Do I? <laughs> Any way you can uh, share some of those pictures? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, am I able to approach you? Yeah, uh, sure. You're okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no All right. I mean, I don't COVID. have recent ones. This is from when we moved in. What's that? Today you also want the documents. Oh, yes. I wasn't sure if you wanted any of my do I mean, you have everything that I have here. Um, but I mean, you could obviously look things up in regards to the national I, average and the I see the pictures of what you're talking about in the house. Yeah. yeah. And um so if you don't mind, and thank you for your patience, <laughs> um, I'm just going to have to go through and scroll through to, to find those um, in the way deep abyss of all of the pictures that I have here. So yeah, I could have been taking all sorts of pictures within the past week. I mean, if you need additional things, I can go you know, ahead and, and do that as well oh yeah yeah this is yeah these are beauties so i think you, you'll you'll be able to see yeah all right the pace is going to be a little bit quick on the pictures because they got another yeah one we got another one coming oh, yeah, so absolutely. yep I just show us a couple real quick oh it's yeah, fine so um i mean this is what many of the edges of the doors look like okay we can, okay. Kind of, we can get together yep. yeah okay um, uh, oh so all of our vanities apparently you know, he decided to not let the plumber know as to where the cuts needed to be. Every single vanity has holes cut in order to have the plumbing fit and everything, the fixtures and stuff like that. Um, just, you know, unfinished, okay? Yep. yep. Um, let's see here. Um, cracks everywhere. Sorry, that one didn't come out. No. Uh, that's like already cracked within, not not in the um, in the uh, garage, but this is you know the basement floor and everything. These are all things that we're going to have to like go through and have redone. Our whole entire, you know, we don't have a fancy porch or anything else, but all of this is coated with like extra um, mortar or whatever that they use for the facade. Okay, and. The whole entire porch is like that. It's, it is stained like that. The only way to have that taken care of is having somebody either redo it, um, you know, just crush everything out again and report it. Okay? Um, let's see here. Yeah, cracks, cracks. Oh, I didn't even get to where the bathtub was. So I'm not sure if I have that one on here. Um, but anyhow, you can see. We got a sense of what you're talking about. Yeah, we got somebody right now. That's a shame. Um, right over here, well, it's probably not the great picture over here, but you can see we have a bathtub there yeah. and it, you know, this is all underneath. If you, if you go behind it, there, the, the tile was, was miscut and everything. So that's how our whole entire bathroom is right now. That's, that's, okay. so, that's unfortunate. All right. Well, thank you for well, thank you very much. Right, no, thank you. And wherever mm -hmm. you are in the, the so. world of recording this. Thanks for so. coming in. It was nice to see people. <laughs> yeah, it was glad. On the phone all day, so, so it was nice to okay. see people. Yeah. I, and again, I apologize. I didn't know like right. how this whole process, I didn't have, I guess I must have had like an inform or whatever. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, okay. All right. Well, thank you again thank for you. all of your time. So, well, like, thank you for coming in. A couple of weeks with the results of this. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, again, we 
we appreciate, you know, your time and your review and efforts and everything. But, um, you know, as you know, right now, um, the citizens of this country, as well as this town and outside of Rochester, we're already at the precipice. I don't think we could take any more hits at this point. Yeah, I'm with and you. we are law abiding citizens that have been paying taxes for all of these years and everything else and we can't we can't do anymore. We can't give anymore. Yeah. We can't. Yeah. Understood. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, I'll get the next one for you. Uh, good evening. Hi. Hi, how are you tonight? Good, how about you? We're doing okay, thanks. All right, so welcome to the Board of Assessment Review. Uh, before we get started, I just want to uh, swear you in. So do you swear that the information you're about to give is, to the best of your knowledge, accurate and truthful? Yes. Great. So then just for the record, uh, if you could state your name and the address of the property that we're going to be talking about. Matthew Bauerline, 4 Colton Court, Webster. Okay. And so um, just so that we make sure we're all on the same page, uh, the information that we've got in front of us is that the town currently has the property assessed at 510,400 and you're looking for a reduction down to 440,000, is that correct? Yes. Okay, great. So uh, why don't you tell us uh, a little bit about the house and um, how you have concluded that 440,000 is the right market value for your property. Uh, bought the house in 2019. Uh, it was built in 2011. 2,085 square feet. Um, the cost per square foot at $440,000 is $211, which is similar to other properties in my neighborhood. Um, they range anywhere from under $200 a square foot all the way up to the highest would, of course, be mine. Um, but uh, I'm looking at some others that are 220 222 185 um, so I think my assessment is, you know, if we're looking at cost per square foot is over those. I paid 440000 for it three years ago. I know it's probably gone up a, a little, but I don't feel like 510 is, is is fair. Originally, you said it was 526 but when I first called, it was reduced to 510 Yes. Okay. So just um, would you be able to speak a little bit to the differences between, you know, your house and the, the quality of the upgrades that are in that versus the houses elsewhere in your neighborhood? I cannot because I haven't been in any of the houses in my neighborhood. Okay. Very good. Did you add the they're swimming pool to homes. the house? They're all, they're all custom homes built by uh, Crosstown Construction. Um, you know, I'm assuming they're of similar style. Was the pool added after the purchase? Yes, the pool actually was done before, uh, after um, it was assessed before, the pool hasn't even um, been inspected yet. So the assessment was done before that. Okay. Okay. But it, it was built after your purchase price? Yes. Okay. okay. Very good. Is that about it? Got anything else? No, I'm just um, looking at um, the 510 assessment, yep. and that brings my cost per square footage, if I were to resell it, to $245 a square foot. And there is nothing that I saw in the records um, for the new assessments that was close to that in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. We... The highest one, I believe, was 227 that I found that it sold recently. Very good. Okay. Okay. We'll consider everything and uh, make a decision, and then the town will send you out a letter by probably by the end of June. Okay. Very good. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you. Thanks All so right. much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right, yep. Bye. -bye. bye. <laughs> Okay.
Okay, well, that, uh, that concludes uh, the meeting for today. We're going to adjourn. Uh, we will reconvene at a future date to be determined uh, to hear additional uh, testimonies. Thank you.